so there we are. A very warm welcome, everyone, to a brand new Money Battle match. Our featured main characters on this one, Kevin Lanoye and Mark Bijsterbos. This match is obviously brought to you by Orange Forks Production, the gold standard in live streaming. Special mention also to the venue holder, Vincent Payman. Looking forward to talking you through this match. My name is Arya Sorabi. And I'm joined by the man behind all this, Orange Forks Production, and the former European Seniors Champion Nineball, the one and only Jimmy Vorum. Good morning, good morning. Yes, uh, another be money battle match today. This time hosted in uh, Sportpub Goes, hosted by uh, Vincent Peme, uh, the owner. And um, yeah, we have a a nice match lined up. Uh, Mark Beistelbos, his uh, third appearance here now in a short time. It is. Looking for his uh, first win. And uh, yeah, this time he's uh, competing with Kevin Lanoy from Belgium. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how this uh, match will evolve absolutely i'm looking forward to this one because these are two very fluent and quick players these are two very as i said uh, quick thinkers quick mm -hmm. players but i uh, just uh, just before we dive into this match i think it's only fair to reflect on that very emotional clip we just uh, started the show with uh, the sudden death of etienne heckelman uh, shocking news to a many of us and also the r most recent news we had is about the passing away of uh, Jelle Kajlstra's father. Um, I would like to offer my deepest condolences to both families and everyone who, uh, who have been uh, affected by this horrible news. Yeah, tragic, especially that uh, because um, yeah, Jelle yeah, recorded a very yeah, emotional message to uh, yeah, share some mem memories he has for uh, from uh, HN, yeah. and now uh, he's on the uh, the same side, so to speak, losing his father. Yeah. So uh, yeah, terrible, terrible uh, times. Um, yeah, again, yeah. our condolences to uh, Jelle and his family. Just to touch upon uh, the Etienne, do you have like a personal uh, experience with Etienne? Have you played him before or? Uh yeah, I played a couple of times uh, in, in the, the league competition years ago. But uh, as uh, Alex uh, Grunwald, uh, his former young, uh, the, the, the Dutch young selection coach, he mentioned that uh, yeah, I was focusing more on the studies. He didn't play much, so uh, recent years I didn't see him much uh, in the scene. He was more playing playing more local tournaments, I think. Yeah, yeah, I can really relate to what Alex Grunwald was saying there at the end. Uh, my first encounter with Etchen was when I joined the national squad with the juniors back in 2007. We had so many talented youngsters at the pupil age group where. HN was obviously one of, and uh, Mark Peister was, as you can see, at the table. Um, and I always uh, refer to that group as the golden era in terms of sheer quality, because if you look at uh, so many players that came out of that group and later on went on to win some major trophies, such as Mark, uh, Marco Teutcher, winner of the uh, US 10 Ball Open, um, you uh, you had this trio from Eindhoven, like Alex uh, referred to, Ivar, Marco, and Mark, Mark Teutcher, uh, sorry, Mark Weisterbos. Um And I should also mention, of course, Jelle, because if it wasn't for Jelle and, and Ronald, I would have never been even uh, introduced in uh, uh, competitive pool tournaments mm. in the Netherlands. But I think for me, this kid out of the north, the Chen, he had something special about him. Yeah, I mean, he truly had character and and he wouldn't be bullied on the table that easily. I remember that his timing back then uh, looked the most fluid in my eyes. As I have a snooker background, I always tend to look at uh, technical uh, uh, execution and I, I really enjoyed his style of play. And... Um, 
what Alex was saying, he truly only did add positive vibes to the group. And this is uh, the m memory I have with Etchen. Um, of course, I've seen him, I think, more than a decade after that in team competition and al always ever so eloquent in the way he carried himself. And uh, I couldn't really detect that something was off maybe. Uh, but yeah, like Jelle said, uh, we all remember him as a great pool talent. And uh, those who had the fortune to build a personal relationship with them, uh, once again, uh, our condolences and our thoughts go out to you. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, it's a tough time, but um, we have also some positive things. Great match lined up here today. Yes, l luckily for us. Yeah. <coughs> so we've seen a uh, couple of jump shots in the first rack. Unfortunately, neither of the players uh, made the shot. And it's uh, Mark here at the table. Is he going for the center pocket? No. Yes. Uh, like you mentioned uh, at the start of the show, um, Mark has featured already three matches. In uh, oh, this is a third, I should mm -hmm. say. And uh, I think it's very important for Mark to have a good start because uh, yeah, the previous two matches he had a very slow start. He struggled to find his uh, the ta the pace of the table, and mm -hmm. uh, and if there's something that Mark is very good at is is being a dominant front runner. Um, yeah, just a little uh, unforced error there, and l looks for all money that uh, Kevin is gonna take this first rack, although he needs to negotiate with these last three balls. Yeah, it was a good opportunity for Mark to take the first rack. Uh, unfortunately, he missed uh, the sixth ball. Not sure if it was a, a kick or a skit, as they say in the US. Mm -hmm. As he was cutting the six a little. It looked like it, but... Uh, Overran this one. We can can't tell from here. It's yeah, he's run this maybe 20, 30 centimeters. It's not right. really the first ten ball you want to attempt. <laughs> But I've seen Kevin play in, the in some live streams, uh, and he's, uh, he's, pot he's a good potter, so I didn't expect him to miss that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, uh, I've done some research uh, about Kevin, uh, his background, obviously. Um, I'm sure he doesn't mind me saying this, because uh, Kevin, son of Mario Lanoye, one of Belgium's flag bearers when it comes to Q sports. Fun fact, his father, ever since the very first official Belgium snooker national championships back in 1984, he's featured in eight consecutive finals, of which he's converted six into a win. So um, he's got a bundle of, of experience. He's also done some amazing things on the pool table, his father. Um, other noticeable performances are numerous Belgian titles, Dutch Premier League teams, titles, uh, where he featured alongside the likes of uh, Alex Lely and uh, Jesse Tehu. Actually, at that time, it wasn't the Premier League, but it was called the Pro Team League. Pro Team League. Uh -huh. um, he's a former runner-up at the Euro Tour and a quarter-finalist the at the World Championship 9 ball. So I think it's safe to say that Kevin descends from a rich heritage in terms of Q-sport knowledge and experience on the big stage. Of course, this match is about Kevin's endeavors, so uh, we shall also focus on Kevin. Kevin is a proud father of two. He's going to turn 36 in, in a week time from mm -hmm. now. Uh, he's first picked up a Q at the age of 14. Needless to say, inspired to pick up the game by his father. He showed great potential right from the get-go and just two years short, he picked up his first Belgian national title, which was the straight pool, at the age of 16. Um, he had some noticeable scalps on his resume as well. The former World Pool Masters champion, Alex Lely, Daryl Peach, 
also beaten Claudio Kerec, if I pronounce his name right, Thomas Engert. Um, he's got a personal best of five break and runs in 10 ball. So he's by no means an easy work for Mark. And of course, Kevin originally was scheduled to play Nick van den Berg in uh, this money match. That one got cancelled due to extra regulations for the COVID-19 pandemic we are uh, all uh, facing with. Yeah, good uh, kick save by Kevin there. So uh, we're going airborne again. So <laughs> he, here's Mark taking his jump cue. He did get the jump, but he didn't make the pot. Of course, I've just reeled off a few uh, noticeable information about Kevin. I think it's only fair to also uh, highlight some of uh, Mark Bijsterbos. Uh, born thir 31 December in 1993, so he's 27. He's uh, obviously uh, a former European champion. And the first time he picked up the queue was uh, at the age of eight. And he's featured in the national... Dutch national selection at the age of 10 and progressed to the various age departments. So basically he's never dropped out of the Dutch national selection. Uh, he's won numerous medals, obviously at the uh, youth selection, as well as uh, on a European uh, scene, alongside with uh, Etienne, as we uh, shared in the video before. Um, of course, his major breakthrough internationally came in uh, 2019 where he won the European men's championship nine ball and he also got to the final to the next event right after which was the t uh, eight ball he uh, became runner up there and um, he's also featured in uh, two matchroom events which were the World Cup of Pool uh, in both of the occasions he uh, played alongside uh, Niels the Terminator Feyen and uh, there he's uh, so far picked up a semi-final spot. Also worth mentioning his uh, career all-time high ranking is number two in the European ranking. So you are watching two of the finest. Making uh, the 10 ball here, 7 10 combination, but uh, yeah, as we all know, the 10 will be respotted. On Dockery, he didn't get a, a good uh, position on the 7 after potting that uh, combination. Good point, uh, Henk. Onze referee in het noorden. Uit het noorden moet ik zeggen. Die zit te kijken of we de spelersnamen even kunnen omdraaien. Uh, good shot by Mark there. In the meantime, I will try to uh, switch the names as the players have decided to <laughs> sit on the other opposite side of the score. So I'm going to change the, the names in between the racks.
trying to see if, po if that is indeed possible. Let's overrun this a, a little bit. Shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, good shot. Try to switch the the names of the scoreboard, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't do it as far as I can see. So we just have to keep this uh, on the like this. So score one one. I think we got off to a a long day. Both players are pretty fast. So um, I think it won't be uh, a match like uh, the last money battle between uh, Nick Vandenberg and uh, Jan van Lierop when it was 30-29. Uh, and the match took eight hours. If that's going to be the case this time, we're going to be uh <laughs> just in time uh, back home before curfew. This time Mark has a good shot to play safe and freeze the cue ball behind the five. Oh. Two ball kiss the nine. So no snooker or a hook. Yeah, I have to retract something I said before. I said nine ball. It was indeed ten ball, uh, Michel. What I really meant to say, it was nine ball plus another extra ball. Um, yeah, it was in. Uh, it is in Sport Pub Goes. Uh, as I mentioned on the top of the show, a special mention to Vincent Payment, who uh, made this all possible as well. As well as Jimin, of course, the Orange Forks production director. Um, yeah, I think it's vitally important to see how Mark will get on in this match because it's not going to notice that he has lost his pr previous two quite comprehensively as well. So it's interesting to see how, first and foremost, Mark will get off to a decent start, but also how he's going to deal with adversary. It's hard to see from this angle if the two passes the six, but I think it would. I see a comment in the YouTube chat. Well, uh, Mooncake, if you ever had the chance, I would definitely advise you to come here. Uh, Vincent is uh, one of those who really cares for the sport and loves what he does. So as you can see here in this picture, um, they have these Gabriel Sentinel tables. Um, you could almost say uh, a collector's item because there are not that many of them elsewhere. I think you have maybe two or three in, uh, in Pool Centrum Black. And 
nice lightning, uh, everything, uh, lighting I should say. Uh, definitely worth uh, visiting a trip. <coughs> Rather fortunate outcome there, that kick shot uh, from Mark. This caused uh, Kevin to have a good thought here because uh, there's no obvious path. You'd, th you'd think he's gonna come off the short rail. Ideally, if he can hit the two at the right side, well, he's hit it full even to the left side. I thought maybe if he could have hit the two at the right side. You had the 9 and the 7, he could have l uh, sent the 2 the other way. A lot of balls there to maybe protect protect the 2, but uh didn't work out that way. Mark is looking at the 3 ball. Maybe worth playing the 2 into the 9, line 3 combination. Um, also, yeah, maybe a bit difficult then uh, to control the 2 ball. So he's going to play position. Hmm. Is he hampered with the 7? Um, if so, what is his angle on the 3 ball? <coughs> Looks fairly straight, isn't it? Got away with that one. That was really a loose shot and uh, almost scratched with his cue ball as well. Fortunate not to have left the shot on. <coughs> Kevin is looking whether he can maybe kick and stick, come off the side rail, hit it full. But it's gonna. Or maybe straight. Is he looking at the parting angle here? <coughs> yeah, it's hard to tell if he can reach the parting angle. But if he can't, it's it's not easy to uh, avoid the scratch as well. Yeah, that's why I was thinking maybe come off the side rail, trying to hit the four ball full in the face and try to control the cue ball behind the nine. But it's uh, it's also a risky shot. But if he can't make the putting angle, I'm not sure why is he even. I don't know. It's uh. Yeah, it's hard to see. We have four cameras here, but it's sometimes some shots are just hard to see if they can make it or not. Yeah, that looked easier <laughs> <laughs> than we thought. Yeah. Kevin is uh, supporting uh, on the back of his shirt, Cafe Sport King is where he practices. It's uh, The owner is a good friend of Kevin, actually. Um, Dave Reynolds, close friend of Kevin, so... And he also uh, wanted me to place a shout out to Chris van Mechelen, founder of VM Billiards. And Kevin is us currently using his carbon shaft, 11.9 VM. Speaking of which, <coughs> uh, Chris 
also uh, supports this uh, stream by donating uh, one of the carbon shafts. We have uh, put it up for a raffle earlier this week and uh, sometime during this uh, live stream today we're gonna do the draw so keep an eye on that if you have been one of if you are one of the participants of this raffle just to know that we will do the raffle later this, uh, this day great shot by uh, by mark there yeah. unfortunately he didn't land on the I think the seven that that well bang shot or is he gonna cut he's gonna cut it i think these are not easy made look easy but <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't yeah i always say when you take on a, a brave shot and you make it you always deserve whatever comes your way we have uh, received uh, our first donation from c for y thank you for your donation we just try to uh yeah try to do our best to provide you with any nice matches during this covid absolutely pandemic any kind of support is uh, much appreciated and also if you are interested in streaming an event or playing a money battle match yourself all inquiries can be sent to Jimmy at orangeforex.com as so you can right see in the on the banner in your screen as well as the obviously the PayPal donations or if you want to donate through YouTube you just click on the click on the cash dollar cash uh, super chat super chat symbol yep. uh, it's at the bottom right and if you click on that it's self-explanatory so we really do appreciate the support Looking at the one eight combination. Couldn't do a whole lot with his cue ball because of the angle mm -hmm. yet. But this is enough. This is enough. I think yeah. he should settle with the two down the rail straight ish. Maybe if he can leave himself a some sort of an angle would be ideal. Oh, not too close. Mm just in time what I, I it's as the I wrong angle it, yeah but I think he needs to pass the fort shoot it in the side pocket I, I can't see him hold it no and this is a delicate shot and, and, and the putting angle the pot is not so difficult but to control the cue ball you need some yeah he's doing what you told yeah what you said here good shot uh, just a roll further it would have been plain and simple maybe he needs to stun across it oh no he's going follow through yeah, just bump it out. Just made it a little tougher than yeah, I wanted, think he can but go around the natural back of angle. The ten. Yeah, a little bit of left spin. Two or three rails should be fine. And he could have seen the the pace that Kevin's playing in. So pretty fast. Yeah, faster Very faster than Mark, I think. Mm, it's 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 hard to. <laughs> <laughs> play faster than Mark. <laughs> I think only Tony Drago comes <laughs> in mind. But uh, yeah, he's very fast. And it's always a good sign. I mean, it's uh, any fast player always indicates that mm. they're also fast thinkers because you have to know what shot you're going to play before you actually get down. So if you if you get down very fast, it means those shots come naturally to you. And he left a little angle, so smart uh, play. I thought he was uh, straight in on the nine, but uh, mm -hmm. he had a good uh, angle to go up f for the ten. The old discussion, magic wreck. Yeah. I don't think it's beneficial when you're down on the ten to take it out by then. <laughs> Who am I? Right in the center. Yeah, I agree. I Two agree. When you, when you, when I'm playing a match, it's been ages. But uh, ah, come on now. after the break, I'll take the, the magic wreck away straight away. So you I don't have to be bothered again. I thought there was actually a rule. Well, it's not officially, but it's like you have to, because it can it can actually affect a safety shot, can it? 
Mm -hmm. I mean, if you play a safety shot and it just sticks in one of the spots, basically, uh, indirectly, it's al almost cheating because if that wasn't there, it would have maybe rolled on an inch. And yep. We know any any millimeters in this sport can the change change the whole outcome of the match. Here you can see a good good glance of Mark's break. Obviously, one of his main features. This is a controlled break, but I I can assure you he can break a hell of a lot harder than that as well. Uh, a bit unfortunate. It's controlled, but <laughs> this time uh, the it's one has Cuba. landed difficult. It's it's basically his cue ball. I mean, if his cue ball wouldn't have been on the rail, he always had a shot at the one. I think he's going to bank this one though. If the angle is there, because it looks very tight. Yeah. I think he's going to play safe. No. Double kiss. Playing safe is not something Mark enjoys the most. I'm not saying he's bad at it. I'm just saying it's not really his natural play style of play. Again, the magic rack <laughs> remains there. I just received a message from Goran Kobas, owner of Go Customs. If there was anything wrong with my PayPal uh, account because I didn't uh, get the notification. But yes, Goran, thank you for your uh, donation. Thanks a lot, buddy. Hope you're doing well in these strange times. I know you're working hard in your workshop. I saw, I saw, a, I saw a beautiful uh, carbon cube. With a leather uh, wrap in it for. Uh, no, that was for himself. <laughs> he I he thought it was for a customer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he yeah. only uses the yeah, best yeah, for yeah. himself. <laughs> no, definitely worth mentioning, Goran. Uh, obviously, also hosted uh, our previous two matches. Or uh, was it three as well? Yeah, there was also a, a doubles match. So, a very nice location. Also, one of those who really cares for his sport and has a, a passion of what he does and uh, you can see it when you're there great facilities thanks for the support uh, Goran and talking about support so we already mentioned uh, obviously Sport Pepkus who is hosting uh, the match today here and um, one of the other yeah, supporters or sponsors, so to speak, is uh, Mark Bleek, billiard servers, Mark Bleek. He's doing uh, the table maintenance here, and he just uh, popped over, your over earlier this week to uh, have the table serviced a little, and by servicing was checking if everything was level and so on, you know, just the touch up. Thanks for uh, doing that, uh, Mark. Appreciate if you need, it. Uh, if you need some uh, table maintenance, you can call him. And uh, the other one already mentioned is VM Billiards. Chris van Mechelen from Belgium has started up a nice uh, web shop. You can visit him uh, on his webpage if you need any Q shafts or other accessories. Yeah, uh, he was already a bit fortunate with the kiss he had on the 10. Mm -hmm. Not left himself ideal on the 3, but uh, as you can see, the positioning was even the most difficult part of that shot. Probably had a lot to do with him missing it as well. Um, good opportunity for uh, Mark to punish him for that mistake. It's not landed ideal though on the 4. Yeah, there's two ways about it. He can run through and maybe take the six in the side but mm -hmm. it's not really a, a nice shot is it or you can draw it back I think he's going for the second option well he stunned it <laughs> mm. pretty good Probably. He, he, he cut a, a similar ball even yeah. tougher like this la oh. than this one he cut it in so probably cut it in and oh he's going top so I assume he's gonna yeah the eight at the right bottom, yes. Ah, that's a nice angle, actually. Natural angle, follow through. Ooh, 
improves the speed of the shot. <laughs> he was already up Ooh. thinking, well, it's still fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that those things happen. I mean, you think you've hit the shot perfect, and then all of a sudden you see the cue ball travel mm -hmm. and travel and travel, and you're thinking, when is this is going to stop? But uh, no, all things fine there. And then, uh, another donation just uh, came in from, yeah, Chris van Mechelen, owner of VM Billiards. Thank you for your donation, Chris. Good man. Very supportive. Appreciate it. Also, guys, uh, you don't always uh, uh, any like we said before any type of support is uh, much appreciated. Uh, we also like to push the stream as much as you can. So if you have uh, any friends or uh, relatives or anyone who you think might be bored at their work or whatever, just share the links, like, subscribe, um, so that you can uh, provide this afternoon entertainment, although it's not afternoon officially, to m as much as uh, per people we can. A second look like a dry break, but <laughs> <laughs> in fact, um, not speaking from a technical point of view, but I think this is the best break of the match so far <laughs> in terms of layout and chance. Well, it's only the sixth uh, rack so far. Didn't want to risk going off more rails to put the pot two in the middle. I think he's done a, a wise shot there, positionally speaking. No. You can't really foresee a problem here. Nice and clo close control as well. It's just what he wants. I mean, he let uh, Mark off the hook in the previous rack by missing the three ball. And uh, now it looks uh, like he's going to level the score once again. There's no, uh, has not been any run out yet. Oh, so this far. This will be the first <laughs> one. I don't want to jinx it. Mm, it's hard to see it go wrong. <laughs> Although shots. Balls in the pocket are always a little bit more difficult to play position. I uh, elected to go for the nine in the center pocket. Just enough angle to actually stay at the right side of the table. But the nine, uh, yeah. Like I said, first break and run. And also the first break and run with the magic rack of the table. <laughs> I'll stop it, but talking about the magic back, whatever suits them. <laughs> Try <coughs> looking at the chat in uh, in the YouTube stream. See some discussion, of course, yeah. First about the, the video we showed earlier today for commemorating Etienne Heckelman. Yes, uh <coughs> it would be nice to know that uh Richard for Richard uh, Diphorn that uh Fanon uh, is playing Fanon Slicedom one of the players earlier who uh, yeah passed away would be nice to uh, know that they were play will be playing in heaven a couple of matches challenge matches and yes we are playing in uh, sport pub Goes, great location i think he says uh, 10 pool tables no more is it 10? I think so, yeah. And uh, three snooker tables and also some uh, some billiard tables. Karen billiards. So, great venue. If you want to uh, 
support Sport Pub Goes. As we all know, due to the COVID regulations, the pool clubs are not open in the Netherlands. Uh, Vincent has a GoFundMe link. I'm gonna post it later in the in the chat. YouTube or Facebook? Both. Both. Yeah. Oh, perfect. He's also selling uh, beer packages and he's organizing online bingo games, uh, pub quiz. So if you're bored, I tell you, you can do th two things. You can and you can can support uh, Vincent and have exactly. a nice evening. Support, yeah, 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 exactly. This is ex especially these times. I think it's it's very important that we see support each other. Mm. And, and and support your local uh, shops. I mean, if you wanna have a nice steak, maybe go to your local butcher because Albert Heijn and Jumbo they are selling plenty. And if you have a have a have a big heart for your small community, your town, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's only right to do that. Well, I certainly do, and and I I think that comes naturally if you care about your community. Uh, and yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean. Aside from the, 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 the great tables, great facilities mm -hmm. he's got here, he also really dishes out some great food. It's always been like this in uh, Sport Pub Goes. Vincent uh, likes to take care of his uh, customers, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, certainly he does. He also provided us with a small breakfast or brunch. Yeah. <laughs> Just to say that uh, yeah, he's doing a lot of uh, good things for uh, the people around him shout and out to Peter de Swart for his donation yeah thank you for your support buddy and speaking of donations also we received a donation from Nico Wijnands appreciating the streams thank you very much uh, for showing your support Nico and Peter I'm not really sure what he was trying to play there was he trying to stick the cue ball behind the eight I think so. Maybe he was hoping that the two ball would yeah, go around the table more. Mm -hmm. So the the nine and the eight would be in the in the way, so to speak. I think it's too straight to Oh. <laughs> Looks effortless. Yeah, but that's that's I mean that's the main feature of his game, isn't it? Mm. Mark. When he's on it, I mean he gets down and makes the most difficult situations look like it's absolutely nothing. Bread and butter. And um, yeah, if he if he's on it, he's he is as game as they come. He's played who's who for his in his entire life, so he's not faced by any any challenge. Mm. Mm. That's a that's okay. a that's a Actually poor shot, yeah. I would say. That's really he's a little bit fortunate that he that he kissed the six ball. I think maybe he tried to actually bump the six out because mm. he played it way too hard. I can't actually see another logical reason why he played it so hard. Oh. Um, he's, uh, looks like he's recovered it pretty decent, but uh, still a key shot left here. Six to the seven. And the six isn't at the as easy because this is not a brand new cloth. So oh yeah. ooh, wow, didn't even get there. Yeah, I was uh, I was about to uh, yeah start the conversation about the rhythm, and I mean the rhythm of he lacking of rhythm in this case for matches. He did decelerate in that shot, by the way. Yeah, but the yeah Mark hasn't played any matches uh, for a long while, only the 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 two money battle matches. Yeah, and I see that um, on on Facebook I see Kevin yeah practicing a lot. At home, he has a table at home. Oh, uh, has he? Okay. Yeah, uh, Mark has a also an own table, uh, but in a facility in his uh, hometown, Emmet. All right. Oh no, no! I think he moved his table uh, to his home. Mark. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was yeah. That's that's right because we saw a post of the the guy who yeah. uh, fitted the table for mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, it's it's an uh, interesting uh, subject you've uh, touched upon, uh, Jimmy, because it's n it's not only Mark. It's uh, several yeah. very famous players in the Q sports. If you look at, I mean, luckily, uh, Mashroom just uh, uh, 
brought out their uh, schedule for mm -hmm. 2021, a couple of matchroom events to keep the boys busy. But uh, I mean, the, the, the snooker part of the World Snooker, which also is a part of matchroom life, uh, luckily for the for the snooker players, they have a lot of events, but still mm -hmm. you have a lot of top players to mention. One of them is like a, a Sean Murphy, who recently came out with a statement that he really struggled yeah. to... Not only Sean Murphy, a lot of these top players were that if there's no competition, there's no meaning to, uh, to the practices, they find it hard mm -hmm. to get themselves up for it. He's going for the safety, but he's also called the side pocket for uh, insurance that's uh, about as good as he could have done maybe a, a tad little softer but uh, I'd be surprised if Kevin doesn't hit the seven yeah but what is gonna what is he gonna leave that's the question some info inside information Michel Drent is saying uh, Mark hasn't played at all yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things, uh, Michel. Uh, if you, it's your, Ooh. it's your ob. Oh, I, I shouldn't say obligation, but it's your own responsibility. If you um, have the desire, the intense desire to to develop and keep growing and staying strong, uh, it takes a lot of discipline. And I'm not slagging uh, Markov because he w he wouldn't have become European champion if he lacked discipline. But uh, these times are uh, are uh, challenging for all of us, nonetheless for these players as well. But yeah, so far so good. I mean, he's not looked like his mercurial best, but he's uh, certainly showed uh, better signs so far than he's done in his previous two matches. We uh, streamed. Pops back in front once again. Um, I think we were waiting for Mark to show his uh, power break. I'm yeah. sure <coughs> one stage in this match he will go for it. Well, I've watched uh, Kevin uh, break when he was uh, up, and uh, he did some, yeah, soft, medium soft breaks. And uh, it was working for him. So I think uh, Mark is also looking at that, thinking, hey, I might have to uh, take off a little of my power and get the break going. Yeah. It's always an interesting discussion, of course, especially in pool when we talk about the perfect break. A lot of people refer to Shane Van Boning's break. I mean, it's it's hard to criticize the break, but I've always said one thing. And... Yeah, technically you could maybe have a perfect break, but I've seen it numerous times where players hit the break. Technically, they've executed it as good as they could have ever done, but uh, the table is uh, wide open and nothing dropped. So for me, in my book, a perfect break basically means dropping a ball and having a shot. Now, of course, you'd like to ideally control your cue ball, but it also there's an element of luck in there. You can practice as much as you want, but every table breaks different. So I think, although you want to have the perfect break technically, but it's more important to make a shot every single time. And if you keep doing that consistently, you will create opportunities. Elected a push shot. <laughs> Imagine the cue ball <laughs> would be yeah. right into the pocket. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't it? He's left it dead. Well, is it dead straight? I'm trying to think. No, I think he has a small angle to go around the six and the three. Mm. This Just could be. This yeah. might have been an. Oh, it, well you see, not. It yeah, not. he had the angle. Yeah, and he played with a little yeah. uh, left spin as well, mm -hmm. which made the shot even more uh, difficult. So in the first uh, seven wrecks, we see we have seen couple of twists and turns just because of unforced errors mm -hmm. except that uh, that run out from uh, from Kevin Kevin yeah which alludes to the point I was just making he had a in terms of technically 
a horrible break. His uh, cue ball nearly scratched, but he had a perfect layout and he uh, dished up in no time. Is he? He's trying to. Th I think he's yeah. trying to hit the free ah. ball. Yeah. But why make it so difficult? I mean, I don't think he would struggle to make the three nine combination. Now he has a difficult shot on the two. Uh, I assume it passes the five. I think oh. now is he making it in the side? But that's well. How are you going to control your cue ball then? You're bound to hit it. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Fuck. Yeah, I'm not so sure if that if that was the right uh, right way for me. But uh, I mean, it's easily said afterwards. Mm -hmm. But uh, no. it's up to Kevin to make him uh, make him ponder about in his seat. We just uh, received another donation, this time from Monica, Monica Huizing. Thank you very much. I got all excited. I thought it was maybe Monica Huizing, but Monica <laughs> Huizing, thank you so much. You're too kind. Yeah, just that a little yeah. gentle nudge on the 7. He doesn't really want to push it much further because the 10 might uh, actually cause a problem there to leave himself uh, at the side for the for the five i think he should settle for that doesn't really want to leave himself hampered on the seven. Oh, he could have missed the s seven okay that's even better First, uh, the first thing I just noticed on that, uh, on that particular shot is uh, he tends to aim uh, perfectly in the center of his mm -hmm. cue ball. Something uh, a lot of players work on or struggle with, actually. But uh, that looked really solid for me. Of course, it wasn't the, the most difficult shot ever, but uh, still. Gonna try to uh, switch the players again. You know, look into <laughs> the settings. <laughs> uh, I mean, by now you should know who is Kevin Lanoia and who is Mark Bystebos. So I don't know. W I might be tempted to play a uh, gentle nudge on the yeah. ten to control the the cue yeah. ball. Keep the the the, the cue ball there. Any foolish contact would suffice. We just have to slow pot this. Uh, yeah. The seven. Mm. He elected to do it different, and it worked. Yeah, it's it's a clever way of playing because uh, you that way you uh, take out the equation of maybe ruin it, uh, ruining ruining mm -hmm. a position. Yeah. If you f if you can avoid running into a ball. Uh, yeah, that'd be wise to do so. Still had to queue as well, and he did. A donation just came in from Ireland. The one and only Fred Dinsmore. Good man. Famous, famous wheelchair player. Hope you're doing well there. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> he made a mess of that one, yeah. though. I was b just about to say, uh, it's not an implement pool players love using, it's the rest. And it's not something you use that often as well because of the, the length of the table. But uh, yeah, he's made this 9 a lot more challenging than it should have been. Yeah, I was surprised he didn't play the cue ball around the, the mm. 10 mm. with the rest. Solved it well though. Mm -hmm. If this is uh, what uh, in store for us, I'm really looking forward to this. I'd like to see a match going this tip for tap. <laughs> now we just get a question from uh, Vincent asking if there's any tickets left for the raffle, but sorry to say, or I'm glad to say that <laughs> all the tickets have been sold in one day. Thank you all for showing your support. We will do the draw sometime 
during this live stream and I will post the winner on the Facebook page as well. Already uh, noticeable a, a bit more juice on the cue ball and it's worked out a treat. Can we switch the camera angle? Oh, sorry. No I'm worries. I'm trying to make the the new draw <laughs> for the match. <laughs> okay. Ah, you're trying to change the... Yeah. Never misses a trick, this Jimmy. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm trying to see whether... What's his angle on, on the one ball? No, it looks pretty straight. So it yeah, needs to play a precise positional shot here. Not many areas where you can see the three. Oh, played to perfection. Okay, managed to switch the players in the score. Four in the side. As requested by many viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Hank, you know who you are. <laughs> You happy now? I'm <laughs> 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 uh, just kidding. So yeah, last question mark should be where is he gonna pop the eight? And it, as he's just landed pretty straight on the seven. This tells me he's going to cut it in the middle. Yeah, he's already looking at the angle. It's tight, huh? Yes, come across, yeah. play the nine in the same pocket. Mm. He played it with inside English. That makes mm. it more difficult. Mm -hmm. Pushing the, the eight towards the, yeah, the point of the pocket. Maybe he missed it uh, because of that. Yeah, but it was, it was a tight shot anyway, I think. It was, definitely. Yeah, but I think it, uh, the angle he left himself on the seven didn't really do him favors. Mm. Um, do you think he misjudged it and didn't, uh, yeah, looked at it carefully before he was uh, playing position on that eight? No, I was a bit surprised he tried to uh, play check side. I, th I, I thought he's, he's, he would use the natural angle where he could also maybe just cue a bit freer. Mm -hmm. and then go past the nine and play the nine in the same yeah. pocket. That's what I originally thought he was going to do, but uh, it's hard to criticize him because that wasn't a, a sitter he missed there. But, uh, yeah, Kevin knows the importance to punish these little errors just to inflict uh, a bit more damage mentally to your opponent. Yep. Let them ponder about their mistakes. So I think one of the biggest biggest assets you can have in Q-Sport because um, it's not like tennis where you play one shot and then immediately you get another shot to to uh, reflect. You have to sit there and wait for your another uh, opportunity. Luckily it's alternate break so you will get at the table. Yeah, nice shot. Yeah, well played. Good position on the nine. I always tend to run through and hit another cushion. And he's played it to perfection. Yeah. I just think well, you can just cue it yeah. more positively. Yeah, I understand. Well, it, I mean, at this I point, agree. there's not really a, a lot of pressure. And I, well I know one person would definitely play it a bit firmer. It's it's Niels. Niels always like to play it solid. <laughs> and and uh, it's something I really picked up on when I when commentating on Niels fighting mm -hmm. his, his matches. He likes to... Um, put the uh, skids and, and kicks out of the equation by playing certain shots differently. Another donation, this time it's from Rani Mati. Thank, yo. thank you, thank you for tuning in and wow. supporting us with a donation. Santa's in town, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know he was looking for a side bet. I don't know if he, get, if he got any, but uh, he, he texted me if I... Oh dear. Rani boy. 
spending money. No. Cheers, buddy. Supporting. He's <laughs> supporting. I know, no, no. He's, he's a very good <laughs> friend of mine. You always have a good banter. <laughs> Thanks for the support, buddy. I hope to see you at the table. I know you're not really ready hey. to pick up your queue app back again, but... Um, yeah, so uh, we got some uh, messages uh, or saw s some people discussing that uh, Rani uh, has quit playing pool. Yeah, it's for different or reasons. It's not really like... It's it's mo maybe it's more sabbatical. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. And in, in, and to his credit, I mean, he, he elected to focus on other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's perfectly understandable. But uh, yeah, that's I can speak for many who've uh, played against Rani or know Rani closely uh, uh, it would be a shame not to see him back at the table at some point and I don't think he can uh, maintain divorce with pool that long so uh, it remains to be seen but uh, hope you're doing well buddy uh, I think he ran a bit further than he would have liked because first glance I don't think that three passes the f eight although if he lands nice on the three he could uh, play the play the uh, combination meanwhile through the super chat uh, one of our co-commentators Pascal the Smith Pascal thank you so much for your support buddy boom do miss you out here the skateboarding commentator Oh, he's got many talents up his sleeve. Yeah. He, have you seen his uh, video editing? I mean, I was just about to mention he's a talented video editor. If you need any editing of your video, oh contact dear. Pascal. Oh dear. And if you need good videos, then contact Orange Forks. <laughs> exactly. Uh, he just overran his position on this uh, on this four ball. I think in 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 Marcus book I'd be negative but uh, I think there's a very easy snooker behind the 7 here and he's he's going for the jump shot maybe it's because I suck at jumping mm. Mm. oh well nice so outcome I think he's played like four or five jump shots at the moment and didn't uh, put any but he's he's lucky with uh, the outcome of this one yeah but to his credit he came really close though that shot but uh I don't know. I thought the, uh, I thought the the snooker behind the seven was a uh, was a given, but uh, it worked out a uh, snooker either way. Well, he can see the edge, so it's not fully a snooker. Hmm. I think. I mean, obviously, he can only see the right side of the of the four ball. He might want to. It's a, it's a small gamble, but you can send it four to the left side of the table and use the four balls in the middle, as well as the five to cover it. But the problem being, if he sends it too close to the pocket, I think a simple side rail kick shot becomes available. Mm -hmm. That's uh, good control, enough. Yeah, he's controlled the, um, the pace to perfection there. He took out the equation of putting the four off the side anyway, so that's a good shot. But don't expect uh, any difficulties for uh, for Mark to hit the four. If anything, he's trying to see where where he can hit the side of the four to. Mm. Mm. No, that's not good enough. And I'd like to thank Song Funk for his donation. Thank you, buddy. A pool playing chef. Yeah, and I wanted to say, in this COVID times, if you want to experience a sort of a, a night out, a dinner, a nice dinner with your lady. Night in. <laughs> <laughs> you can book uh, Sang as his home, uh, as your home chef. He will come to your house and cook a really great three or four course dinner for you yeah. and your guests. I've seen some of the photos, <coughs> and they look. Uh, from a different Amazing. planet, different planet, great stuff. He can't play pool, but he can uh, make <laughs> some. Uh, <laughs> but he can cook. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I'm just kidding. 
So you, what you're saying is he is a great pastry chef, but at the table he's a bigger pastry chef. Um, <laughs> something no. <laughs> no, thank you so much for your support, Sung. I appreciate your work. Chance for Kevin t to make a, another point on the score. <coughs> I think um, uh, not. I, I know Kevin is playing with a, a VM Billiards carbon shaft yeah. from uh, Chris van Mechele from VM Billiards, but I'm not sure what diameter he's using. 11.9. 11.9. Yes. Interesting. And I think he just switched to that uh, shaft not so long ago. He did indeed. He, uh, when I uh, spoke to him to mm -hmm. get some background information, he yeah. actually wrote to me that all his life he's been playing with a, a, a natural uh, wooden shaft. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, yeah, he had this opportunity to play with these VM uh, gear. Yeah. And one of the reasons he's picked up playing again, he, he's got a lot of support and he's very proud to represent these group of people that support him. And uh, he gave it a go and uh, in his own words saying that the carbon shaft he's using is the best he's ever had in his hand. So that should uh, say something. Meanwhile... Uh, Mark just popping out, have a little short toilet break. I see that uh, Mark's uh, mother, Constance, is also watching. Nice of uh, you to join the stream. And uh, Olivier van der Pitte, uh, thank you for the compliments for the stream. Just doing our best. Not sure, I'm, I, th I, I know that Olivier, Olivier or Olivier, was looking for a, a big side bet as well. I don't know if anybody took him on on that. Who was he you betting? Don't have to, you don't have to share the details, uh, <laughs> Olivier. Well poised this match. If you just joined us, uh, welcome. You're watching a live stream. Both players just popped out uh, to have a little toilet break. This is the first time actually one of the two players has taken a two racks advantage. As you can see on your screen, Kevin Lanoye leading 6-4. And I think it's marks to break, isn't it? Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know who, who won the toss. Yeah, unfortunately we can't see uh, in this, uh, this software who is... Uh who's up for a break. Um, but the players will know. It's the 11th yeah. rack. Yeah, it's Mark's who won the Mark's Who rack. won the leg? I don't know, but he's Mark. at the table, so oh. <laughs> he's yeah, Probably Mark. Um, by the way, maybe you, well, you can't actually see in this picture, uh, Mark is also now uh, this, well, of course, COVID uh, ru uh, spoiled everything, but uh, he is uh, one of uh, crucial parts of the Sport Poop uh, national uh, team competition uh, players, alongside who you see in uh, Ivo Arts. Ivo Arts, one of those I actually forgot to mention in the great pool of uh, young talent. Ivo Arts, uh, also a phenomenal player. He would really suit to this type of game because he's also a very fast player. I hope to see him uh, back at the back in action again. So if you're watching Evo, he actually was back in action, playing yeah, with Jim, doubles, the doubles. Yeah, yeah, but it's doubles is different, uh, different, whole different kettle of fish, you know. Um, yeah, that wor that match didn't work out for those guys, but uh, I think yeah, pool usually is always plays played single. So like to see uh, Evo featuring one of these. Uh, big matches as well as uh, Tim.
Tim de Ruiter, another uh, uh, member of the Dutch selection that was published recently. Mm -hmm. Also great to see Marco Teutcher back in the team, yeah. back in the squad because uh, he is solid as a rock, although he does reside in uh, New Zealand for quite a while actually. Yeah, uh, he's, he's uh, official uh, a New Zealand uh, Kiwi. Yeah, <laughs> he's a, he's the orange Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about the golden Kiwi, but uh, orange Kiwi is a new, uh, new breed. Or maybe the orange Kiwi is c is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Sell it on the market. No, he, there you go, Marco. Yes, the first. Get a girlfriend and then uh, <laughs> get a child. Get a child. Mm -hmm. Then we have the orange kiwi in the house. Mm, this looks a bit pacey. Yeah, or well under. Oh. I think he was playing for this side. You okay, think? then yeah. if he, if he was playing that, then forget what I've said. <laughs> Earlier he missed yep. uh, one of those, he decelerated. Of course, uh, that had also to do with the p uh, positioning he was trying to play. I expect him to make this one. Yeah. And he did. I have to say, so far from what I've seen from both players, but also especially Mark, and I think maybe sub uh, subconsciously um, because of his previous results, uh, I was hoping to see Mark to put up a fight, and he is. But also, he's just looking relaxed and composed, which is a, a great sign. Couple of donations uh, have come in. First of all, Naveen Ramkeleman, thank you for your donation. Naveen Speiler. And then uh, also Roy van der Plas watching in 020. <laughs> <laughs> One of many great players from Plan B. Thanks, guys, for your donation and your support. Good stuff. What do you think? Would he go for attack or maybe try to play a good safety here? I think he's going to attack. I mean, I would look for the attack, but the three is not a no. uh, uh, straightforward positional shot. Uh, nor pocket to play for. Would make more sense to, uh, to play a, a safety here, especially with that uh, three, seven and eight. I mean, he could, he could almost play a shot to nothing by trying to put the one in the obvious bottom right corner pocket, and maybe leave <coughs> himself some sort of a shot on the three in the right middle as we look in this screen. But um, it's uh, it's a, a tough judgmental shot to play, and by judgmental I mean uh, to judge the pace. Well, he didn't go for that. He yeah. played the what you said, and. Luckily, he kissed the seven, otherwise he left the door open. Yeah, he did. But uh, looks good enough for me yep. here. Mark mm. grabbing his jump cue again. Yeah. Jumping over the three and then play the kick shot, I think. Yeah. The angle looks too steep to avoid the three balls hindering the one mm, mm. too much. Looked like he played with a little left hand spin as well, the jump shot. He did, yeah, yeah. he did. To come around the angles. But I thought he would have needed to come a bit closer to the left middle pocket to make that angle. Anyways, mm, yeah, the yeah. three uh, has to be a combination, you'd think. Although it's looking like he's thinking about maybe trying to win this rack by three fouls. No, I think he might go for the pot in the corner and. and Play the cue ball up table towards but the three for the three in I the middle. You can easily put. No, it he's not playing. He's playing, playing safe. Yeah. It, well, he's lining up for a safety now. I think. Yeah, that's interesting because 
I'm not so sure if uh, Mark would have uh, gone about it this way though, if he would have had ball in hand. I don't think he's playing the pot. Uh, he's definitely eyeing up some sort of a safety. Yeah, if he could send the uh, the two, oh sorry, the one uh, behind the seven and the eight, and place his cue ball tight behind one of these balls at the bottom half of the table, I think he's uh, he's got good chance to get the second foul. But I'm not so sure what he's looking at here. Yeah, he, he wants to play the one up table and and put the cue ball somewhere behind the ten, I think. If he then uh, uh, if Mark uh, fails to hit the the one, he will have the one close to the three ball. Yeah, but he could do the same thing by sending it over the right side. Oh, he wants to play behind the mm. six. I'm not sure. He I'd be surprised to if, do this. if Mark does not hit the one here. That's an easy jump for Mark. I don't think the one three is uh is set, so. No. Maybe you'll call the nine pocket. We can see it. So the nine ball, I should say. It's not a combination. No, and he's not called a combination, has he? No. I thought it was worth calling the nine. Oh. <laughs> That's worked out a treat. <laughs> yeah. Kevin looks at looks up the sky in, in disgust, but in all fairness, he didn't really play a good shot there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, of course, this is a lucky outcome, but. He, I mean, safe to say, when he thought long and hard about playing safe, uh, I think he envisioned a lot harder escape for Mark than uh, what he left him with. Kevin looking at his options, wha what he can do. It's not much options he has. He has a kick shot, two or three rails, uh, sorry, two rails towards the one. Can he play it from the other side? I don't think so. I think the three is in the way. He's looking at a, a one railer now. <laughs> That sounds cool. <laughs> He's looking at that one rail <laughs> and <laughs> a super chat donation through YouTube from the one and only Shaggy from the East. <laughs> Brian Wu, <laughs> thank you for your donation. We did go for one real kick. That's not that bad. I don't think he's left the pot for the one. So the only option here for Mark is to play a safety. Don't think he's gonna take on this uh, this bank shot, long bank on this. One ball. And by saying that, he takes on the one. <laughs> <coughs> and position. <laughs> So the only challenge now is what is he what can he do with the five nine or the five? I think it's uh safe to say he's gonna play that combination. Mm, on yeah. At, at that'd be sensible to play that shot, so only thing he needs to decide is which side of the table is gonna leave his cue ball. It's going to the right side, so it's a bit Thinnerish contact. Mm. It's all about controlling the cue ball and the object ball. I don't foresee him missing this. And as you said, he yeah, doesn't have a good shot on the five. Mm. I think he's going to go for this, though. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, is he gonna play double bank? <laughs> I yeah. yeah, I mean, if windows come off, they. I mean, that would <laughs> I was if pretty close. Yeah, if, <laughs> if there would have been a crowd, they'd go lose their mind. But uh, unfortunately, took the brave shot, took a chance, missed, and uh, now needs to hope he gets another visit. But um, I'd be surprised if he would. I think once again he's trying to screw mm -hmm. across of the face of it. Nice little bit of check side. Touch the eight. Yeah. Let's see if his uh, how his speed control is to play around with ten. It looks perfect. I do feel though, maybe it's just the uh, early days, but I do feel like of the two players, uh, Kevin is m has more been punishing Mark's mistakes than vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the last wreck uh, Mark took on the adventurous uh, double bank on the one. I think <laughs> he was playing it with safety in mind, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the one actually came too close to the pocket. That's why he left it on for uh, for uh, Kevin. Hmm. Dry break. I don't think he's left a pot on. No, I don't think so. <coughs> and if he hasn't, he's actually presented Kevin with a problem here because the double kiss looks almost certain mm -hmm. mm, I think he's trying to look uh, he's looking to pop the one off the side and I don't have a problem with that shot but I think it's a bit of a gamble if he can actually get uh, another shot after that yeah if he makes the one pr the the cue ball is probably going towards the five yeah, and even if he misses the five, he could easily run into the mm -hmm. six or the seven. Oh, he's, he's drawing. Cue ball. In the background, you to can shorten see... To shorten the, the angle. In the background, you can see Mark's uh, girlfriend supporting him. Ah, yeah. A good shot. Yeah, it's proved me wrong. But... Mm. Mm. Maybe a bank shot here? Yeah, I think so. I think it's uh, the bank is on, but... Um, he this deserved a better uh, position on the on the two mm -hmm. ball there. This could be the key to winning this rack, if he makes this bank shot here. Once again, <laughs> Magic Rack is actually now hindering him, <laughs> even more so. Mm. Maybe not even taking out the, uh, the bank shot. Yeah, might play safe using the 3 and the 10 as a blocker. Yeah, tight and sharp. No, well, oh, he's called a yeah. long bank, so that's definitely he's going to play safe here. Yeah. He's just called it. In case you make it. Mm -hmm. Nice shot, because this cue ball... Uh, that looks pretty tight. ...had uh, very bad intentions. And uh, advantage Kevin, at first glance, I'd say. Does connect, but I think he's left it. Yeah, there you can see it. So, although he's not out of the woods just yet, because he needs to play a good positional shot here. A uh, couple of balls to negotiate with. And I don't think it's a natural angle, so he needs to put some work on this cue ball. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure he didn't play it that way, but uh, he's still in with a chance here. Can he hold it, you think? Well, it's looking like it is. It's a nice shot. Made it look easier than it was. Yeah. So that safety he's played. Looks like it's gonna offer him a great opportunity to uh, increase his lead. Now just looking to be playing the five and six in key position on the five. Mm. That's not it, unfortunately. I think he played it in such a way with speed that he was hoping that the five ball would pass that seven or something else and uh, leave a good angle on the on the five. He has to do something with this one. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, there's a bank shot on, but yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think he's going to go for it, though. Uh, wha that what other options does he have? Well, I mean, he's trying to look for some sort of a safety, isn't he? I mean, he can maybe send the the five towards the, the, the bottom rail and use the ten. Uh, needs to judge that shot as mm -hmm. well. It's not easy. I mean, if he goes for the bank, in most scenarios, that would basically mean all-out attack, although he might have an element of safety uh, if he plays at such a place. Well, he's called the bank now, so he's he is going for the shot. Let's see if he can get close to this. Oh, it's pretty close. <laughs> has not left, left anything <laughs> yeah, but easy. He has, he has left uh, a bank. The gap here. No. This time he elects to play safe. Mm. Can Kevin see the right side of the five ball? Can we see it from a different angle? <coughs> Yeah, you can see it. Uh, well, I mean his right side, so w I it's our left. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, straightforward safety. I mm, think you'd be disappointed with that one. Uh, he was really looking to put him uh, in a snookered position. What a good shot. Yeah, you can't take liberties with Mark. I mean, he's a great putter and mm. also a great c creative player as well. I mean, from that one. One great shot. He's forced an opening. I think it's an important wreck as well. Doesn't want to fall too far behind. No. If he makes this one, he's within one wreck. Yeah. Yeah, fine margins, uh, Jimmy. I mean, um, although his cue ball was nice, he, uh, he created a lot of separation between the balls, but uh, like I said just previously, you can't really afford letting players like Mark, one of the best pot putters we've ever had, to see something on, because you know for a fact he will go for it. And uh, yeah, nicely worked out, converted mm -hmm. into a rack. Two donations uh, have come in. One from Olivier van der Pitte. Thanks, Olivier. And also one donation from Bart Ilfelman, the orange mess mesketeer. <laughs> You're putting out some one liners today, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> Thank you guys for your support. 
Much appreciated. Yeah, you're right. Ever, ever, every break uh, so far has been mm -hmm. uh, with the intention to control, yeah, rather than smash and, and hope. And uh, although a couple of fortunate kisses has left himself at least a chance to pot this too. Mm. I mean, from this angle, it might look easy, but that's a very steep cut shot. Mm -hmm. He might even elect to play the bang shot. Well, but but Mark got a few of these in. Mm -hmm. So I would have loved to nudge the three there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's There's not too bad. I mean, at least he's got an angle to work with. But uh, there's a lot of balls to avoid on his way back towards the right side of the table to uh, put the four after this. Played a bit too hard. Yeah. But at least he's got a an option here to Oh he's looking at the putting angle so he's not thinking of playing safe. Again, not an easy shot this one. And also not really sure what the cue ball and the object ball are gonna do afterwards. Oh that's worked out a treat by although mm. saying that. Yeah. Does the six packs the uh, eight? I think so, but with the cue ball there near the near the the rail, it's not an easy shot. No, it's not. But um, luckily for him, with the angle he's got, he doesn't have to generate a lot of power. Just needs to make sure he puts the six, does not scratch, and you automatically land on the mm -hmm. seven in the side. He's looking at the pot. I think yeah. the, the the eight is yeah. at least blocking uh, maybe 25, 30 percent of the of the pocket. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I'm actually well both located right directly behind the table, although a bit further away. As I look at it from not from on the screen, but in in reality, I think uh, the natural angle scratch is definitely not on and also the cue ball isn't actually tight on the cue ball so you can actually cue it uh, yeah still a difficult part oh yeah taking the other corner reprieve for mark well needs to punish this though yeah this is a great opportunity to uh, to level the match again at 7-7 seven seven. Well played. Something worth mentioning that Mark Beisterbos is playing in this uh, in the team of Sportpip Goes, showing his wearing his jersey for Sportpip Goes, of course. I think you already mentioned the other teammates yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, earlier. Yeah, for many seasons, oh. obviously, Mark, uh, because of where he currently lives in the north, he played for uh, Emmen. He's going to play the bank opposite the middle pocket. Yeah. yeah he's a very uh, good banker of balls, Mark. As you saw in that uh, difficult uh, attempt he had, got really close. But, uh, yeah, these uh, straightforward banks... Uh, or something that you are used to seeing him putt. So, yeah, imported for Mark to uh, stamp his authority as well and punish those little errors. Like we said mm -hmm. previous, so far it only seemed like Kevin was punishing Mark for his errors. And I think it's very important for Mark not only take his own opportunities, but also let Kevin know that if you miss anything, or if you leave me anything, I'm going to punish you. Like he did the rack before this where he uh, made an incredible long putt and took the rack from there. So that's like two small errors he's punished right straight away. And now looking to pounce upon that. All level. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 
he's been quite unlucky in that break because uh, a couple of kisses prevented certain balls to yes. drop. And he's hampered he by hampered the six. Yeah. And he has to create some pull power. out a good shot. Ay. Yeah, I think that's obvious that uh, Mark is uh, missing the rhythm of playing a couple of matches during a week. Yeah, uh, This wasn't the easy shot, but I think he would have normally be closer with that putt than uh, he just showed. Yeah. I'm just uh, quickly looking at Mark. I think he's a bit hungry or something. He's pointing at his belly. Uh, good shot there. Of course, at some point in this match, these guys will take a short break to maybe fill up some gas. Mm. It's good enough. Now needs to figure out the way to play of pocket the four and play position on the five. I think he's gonna try to bump the five. Oh. He was able to go up and down That's or across in this uh, case. Actually a better shot than it, ac yeah. than it looked, but uh, <laughs> a slight a bit unfortunate that he's left himself off straight at the wrong side of the five. Uh, so I uh, suspect he's gonna roll it maybe a five inches further put the six somewhere around there yeah yeah i think he should be fine right yeah i'd be surprised if he misses this so i think it's all about his uh positioning yeah cheated the pocket a little bit yeah just to be sure he didn't go towards the rail but instead away from the rail so uh two good shots and uh, he should be in front once again from this position I'll tell you what though I mean it's the first time I've actually seen him play uh, live in action uh, but I like what I'm seeing fluent player doesn't really hesitate a lot and, uh, and also his technique looks solid on point I think the one person we forgot to mention by the way in his camp is, uh, is uh, he had a, a long sabbatical a uh, couple of years and I think mm -hmm. it has to do something with him obviously being a father of two and uh, yeah. his focus and priorities lie elsewhere but I think once he picked up the game again, uh, he took up coaching from, um, let me see, one second. Um, who's that famous Belgian coach? Johnny van Rijkel? Johnny van Rijkel, exactly. I was <laughs> searching for his name. Johnny van Rijkel. So he's been, he's been receiving coaching from Johnny van Rijkel. And uh, yeah, he's looked uh, level-headed. He hasn't really showed a l great deal of emotion, and uh, I think he's just kept his uh, rhythm and, and game plan all throughout. So, uh, yeah. Okay, I've just shared the uh, the GoFundMe link in the Facebook chat. <coughs> if you want to uh, support Sport Bebrus, Vincent Peme and his crew. You can send a donation through that link. Gonna share it in the YouTube chat as well. Vincent always doing a lot of things for the sport and the players. And in this case, for these two players and the two commentators in the stream. <laughs> yeah, he's faced with a with a problem here. I'd be tempted to take this pot on 
in the right co right yeah. bottom corner yeah, yeah and he's i think also, he's, he's doing eyeing it. it up so yeah the w the the cue ball will go towards the left side of the table yeah. he just has to control the speed he's, he's putting a little draw of playing it yeah. yeah he try to be a bit extra cautious and uh oh demo went in demo went in yeah Is the two uh, glued to the rail? Mm. Looks like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be fine. I think he could avoid, or at least avoid, snookering himself. Didn't take too many liberties, and I think he, sh he could settle with this one because he's got a nice little off uh, off straightish angle. Run it through. Very important in these type of shots and uh, you try to cue it in the middle of the of the ball obviously top because you're using top spin and just cue right through the aiming line I think he's losing using a little bit of left spin is he no it, no, it looked like it a little yeah. Yeah. received a donation from the one and only Mark Bleak billiard service Mark Bleak for all your Table maintenance. Thank you, buddy. <coughs> it's also my uh, former colleague when I was working at Lonchins Billiards. Good man. Thank you so Start much. Yeah, started his own company, Billiard Service Mark Bleak. So, like I said, he's doing the table maintenance here in uh, Sport Pip Goes and other clubs in the Netherlands. Not just pool, also snooker. He's a very good table fitter and snooker as well. I will keep his name in my mind once I have mm -hmm. accomplished a, a <laughs> big Big dream. enough place. <laughs> big dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you need a, a pretty big room for a pool table, full-size pool table, nine foot. But for a full-size snooker table... 35 square... 35 square yeah. meters you need. Yeah, takes a lot of space. Meanwhile, good signs here. He's queuing well, and I think he's growing in confidence. I might be wrong, but just judging by his body language, it yeah. looks uh, zoomed in. But it's the the thing with this uh, these long races. Uh, I think the first race we uh, started like this was uh, Nick versus uh, Mark. That was his first. Uh, Correct. And since then, uh, other players who wanting to play uh, a money battle match are actually copying uh, copying the format. So it's always ten ball race of thirty break. alternate break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The five hundred in the middle is uh, sort of a benchmark now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, also uh, uh, another thing is as well. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't think it's a secret by now. That's why we ask for the donations. We, all of us, especially you, but uh, the the co-commentators and so on. We always, we all do this on a voluntarily base. So it'd be it'd be hard to drive all this way for a hundred euros in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Well, we I for most. First of all, we do this for the love of the game. Ab absolutely. And we course. want to uh, give the players a platform to play on, uh, on a high-quality stream, supported by commentators. And uh, yeah, especially now in the, the, during these COVID uh, times, we just feel that people are, are yeah, aching for good matches. Absolutely, online. yeah, absolutely. I think uh, especially in these times, we can all use a bit of entertainment mm -hmm. and what better than live entertainment brought to you with uh, by persons who like you said again uh, who have a lot of passion about the sport yeah my tea has uh, run cold so I, I'd like to have a new one I'm gonna try to drink it this one <laughs> in time.
Yeah, we're just uh, talking to Vincent here, seeing if we need anything, Did food, drinks. I didn't call the six. I thought it was worth of going mm. uh, off, uh, kick the one in. Looked pretty uh, big pocket for me. But Maybe he's going to bank the one towards the six. I don't think he can even... No. Or cut the one into the right center and also... Well, no, you, you can only con uh, call one shot, so... Mm. Play, play the one towards the right-hand drill. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> you know, towards the two. Uh, play the one. Oh, yeah. Okay. You have to play it that way, though. Yeah, he's itching to go for some sort of attacking. <laughs> uh, no. So, yeah. Probably he's going to play it safe. Ooh, <laughs> he overcut it. Yeah. I didn't think that was possible. Hence his uh, <laughs> reaction. Mm. I think you can actually see the edge. Yeah, I think so. So if he, he doesn't even have to, well, maybe it's even value to play off the rail, I don't, but maybe the two is uh, causing a problem go off the rail. No. Perhaps not, no. because if he can see that point of the side rail, uh, you you'd think he'd, he'd be able to make this. So he's a play he's he, yeah, he's has to curve around the two. <coughs> yeah, it's all it. about the pace here. Yeah. I don't think he... Well, he judged the, the swerve well, but the outcome is not what he wanted. No, and... Uh, it's hard to tell if he can hit the two. I don't think so. Directly, I mean. So he's going to yeah. play a kick towards that center pocket. With safety intentions, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I think uh, he's odds on to hit this or execute the main part of the shot correctly. Obviously, needless to say, he's trying to hit the two full. A little bit surprised by the pace he's played it, but um, no. I was about to say he's, he's got away with it, but I think... I think he's got away with it in, in a sense that he can't hit the two ball enough. I think he can. To make the six? Yeah, because no. he got down quite quickly, which indicates... Just has to be careful that the two doesn't yeah, follow the, the six. That's good. Somewhere in the center of the table would be ideal here. Yeah, I think he's going to play real first. Just going to get the T. They accept it. Oh. <laughs> A good position from uh, Mark. How is he gonna. Yeah. I don't know, Jimmy. I'd, yeah, I like exactly Four. what he's playing. <laughs> yeah. I might be just reluctant or contemplating to play it there. I don't see him missing that ball if if he doesn't leave himself too close to the rail. And he didn't. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think he will make this. And also the sp the pace he has to play mm -hmm. this one. Um, maybe just stun it out and leave himself uh, a half ball pot on the five, in the bottom right. It's interesting because it looks every time he cues from this angle that he he's just a 
slightly off center of his cue ball. Not that he has ever struggled by hitting the cue ball perfectly, but uh, it's the first time I've ever noticed this in his technique. So a uh, couple of key shots coming up. Obviously the angle on the f on the eight, and then how he places himself on the nine. Be looking to place position towards the diamond closest to the left of his hand or in between it's comfortable enough nice little stun run through yeah and he's pegged back in front for the uh, first time ever since the i think the first three racks of the of the match and uh Mark is now in front. Um, I received a request from Tom Penrose, who is looking for a side bet. He wants to put 50 on Mark. If there's anybody who wants to take on that bet and wants to put 50 on uh, Kevin, just send us a PM through the Facebook page or my private Facebook messenger, and uh, we'll see if we can maybe can sort it out. Okay, back to the match. 9-8 to Mark. And it's Kevin's break. No luck there. Just looking anxiously if the, the one ball would fall, but uh, it didn't. Stayed up, and now it's Mark at the table. The two ball doesn't seem to pass the, the six, so that's why he's taking a little bit more time. He's looking to draw it back somewhere just across the center point of the table. Mm. Already looking at the banking angle. I think he can hold this. Just natural angle off the side rail without playing it too hard. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I had to play it Thinner. in such a way, yeah. So it's uh, made it more difficult shot. You can't, like <coughs> you mentioned earlier in the stream, it's sometimes it's not as easy to, you know, to, sh to restrain your arm and play a really delicate shot. Yeah. And in this uh, case, uh, I think Mark missed it. He'd be disappointed that. with that, though. Yeah. And a nice opportunity to maybe take a two-rack lead. And now um, he's left c uh, Kevin in once again. And uh, he's nice in close range with the four to uh, negotiate with the four balls at the left side of here. Yeah, and he already checked the five goes in the center pocket. You can see it here. Even though the top pocket, if yeah. he wants, I think he's yeah, going to play top. Yeah, I think that's top. a wide shot. He tried to ensure himself that he wouldn't have the wrong angle. But that being no. said, 
He has the wrong angle. Yeah. He can can't play it in the side. Can we see a different angle? Which one do you want? <laughs> this one. <laughs> um, that's right. I'll tell you what, I think, I, um, I'm pretty sure nobody's, well, I think, yeah, it's worth taking it in the middle. Go off two, two rails, maybe go d behind the back of the eight. I get stunned with a lot of uh, right hand spin to check it off the side rail. So you're looking at, if you put the five in the middle, left obviously, you try to hit the... Um, the um, side rail, so behind the nine, the side rail, let's say in between the second and the third mm. diamond. Oh, he's gone yeah. inside. And yeah. is <laughs> well All right. Good thinking, and uh, yeah, he's not afraid to, to play these shots. Yeah, he played it inside. I, I, th yeah. I thought he would check it and go behind the back oh of okay. the eight to make sure he didn't uh, hit it on the way back, but. Uh, mm. Mm. The six proved too uh, too difficult of a shot. A reprieve for Mark. I'm yeah. sure he didn't expect to get back to the table that soon. What I am curious though is, I don't see a lot of pool players play with the uh, Tau and Pyro Chalk. I know no. almost 90% of the, uh, the snooker uh, players, the professionals, play with it. Prevents a lot of kicks. Mm -hmm. But I think at the top of my head, maybe Kazakis plays with it, and maybe Jason Shaw. Um, not sure. I think Chris Melling was playing with it. Uh, Kazakis, the the Greek jump master, Damianos Dialurakis. Oh, he plays with it yeah, as well. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So you see, you see it uh, more often, but I think the the hype is bigger in in snooker yeah as the the snooker players are trying to prevent the kicks for some reason the the snooker uh players have more horse also melvin is saying okay more players are uh, affected by uh, kicks in snooker I, I think yeah but i mean in general in q sport uh, it's it's an element we all know that's a part of the game but mm -hmm. if you can enhance the chance of uh, or I should say decrease the chance of getting one why not and and yeah. I have to remind you that the the pyro chalk the pyro version of uh, Taom mm -hmm. is the 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 color of all traditional pool chalks the yeah. dark blue so I actually that's the pool version from Taom although a lot of uh, snooker players have elected to choose that one because it grips a bit better and uh, they had less miscues. C when I had the original version, the first version, I had a lot of miscues because I couldn't really <coughs> implement a lot of side. Yeah. So I you mean from town? Town, yeah, exactly. I but yeah. this pyro chalk, uh, I've been, although I haven't played as much, of course, because mm -hmm. of the situation we all live in. But uh, the couple of hours I had the chance to play, I was really uh, happy yeah. with the town chalk. I remember when I first uh, tested uh, the Tom Chalk uh, a couple of years ago, it just crumbled. You know, when yeah. you were talking yeah, and, and you, you look looking at the table, a, a lot of chalk was falling on the table. Mm -hmm. So that would have made uh, yeah no sense because you're you're actually you're there's not uh, <laughs> enough not on enough chalk on your tip, but so on the table. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And uh, but I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they have uh, uh, moved on with their uh, uh, engineering of the of the chalk, and yeah, they have improved the the formula a lot. Yeah. E. Yeah. In the meantime, Kevin missed <coughs> this jump shot. And he's leaving the one one eight kiss shot. <laughs> yeah. Or is he playing safe? What do you think? Yeah, I mean he can p put him in a lot of trouble if he can send the one up table. There's a lot of balls there to hide behind and uh, leave it uh, close to the rail and behind the eight. As you can see here, the two doesn't pass the nines, and that's yeah. why he's 
mark may be tempting to play safety. Yeah, sometimes the, the, the free foul isn't as obvious on mm -hmm. as you would maybe hope so. So, well, he is going back to his original plan, playing snooker. Yep. Mm, this is a good one. I'm curious to see whether he can see the enough of the side rail. It doesn't really look... Well, he can't definitely... Definitely can't... Uh, see the natural path so he has to man manufacture some sort of yeah. uh, spin he's gonna I play two rails mm -hmm. mm. try to hit the make the, the one in the middle but he has to f focus on the hit first which he fails to do and with that uh, ball in hand it's now easier to maneuver the the cue ball after potting the one towards the two ball in a potable position yeah, so that's second foul now. Or yeah, that's second foul. I'm sure he's called it. What do you reckon? Is he trying to win it? Well, I don't think he's even going for the three fouls. No, no, no. Mm, that's Eesh. a mistake. But does two. Well, the three go past that eight ball? I no, think it's time to... Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. He's on two fouls, of course. <laughs> My bad. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> he's, yeah, yeah. He's just acknowledged once again. Two fouls. Yeah, but he also is a little bit disappointed maybe because he has he's left the window, no window mm. open. Can we see Not a different sure. angle? Because I think obviously he needs to come off the top rail short rail maybe you can play some sort of a, 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 a like a screw check check well he's got even the natural angle so he doesn't even have to implement some sort of extra side yeah so he's trying to look at the the, the center point of uh, dividence between the two balls the cue ball and the three and that's what he's using as a reference point so mm -hmm. he should make a contact with the three it's also difficult for him to reach yeah he's actually caught the three as well in the bottom right corner where the eight is sitting uh, in front of yeah but first things first there you have it he has to get an extension on skew yeah great to see uh, melvin also watching who is that? Melvin is uh, our uh, original MC and DJ who used to uh, introduce the players when the first money battles emerged. You remember? That was a big hit. Good hit. Yeah. And when I say a big hit, I mean the <laughs> <laughs> money <laughs> battle. But this was a good hit as well. <laughs> well, Melvin had a big hit. He had. Yeah. Now he's got a big mouth. No, sorry. Yeah. Uh-huh. got a safety battle going on. Can he jump this one? Meantime, we have two people looking for a side bet. They want to bet on Mark. So if there's any Belgian players who want to uh, take on that bet, send us a PM through the Facebook page. We'll try to set it up. Yeah. And also, if you were interested in playing a money game yourself, send your inquiries to uh, Jimmy at orangefork.com. And see what we can work out for you guys. Yeah. And also don't forget to like or follow our Facebook page. I'm also uh, doing uh, raffles uh, quite regularly. So you can have a chance to win some awesome things like cues, shafts, cue cases. I'm going to do a draw. 
later during this live stream for one of the VM Billiards carbon shafts that was raffled earlier this week. And if you don't want to miss out on any future live streams on YouTube, go to our channel, hit that like and subscribe uh, button, sorry, and turn on the notifications. So you know, after you hit uh, the subscribe button, you click on the on the bell next to it, so you get the notification when we go live. Yeah, wanted to say good shot on the five, but he's left on the he's landed on the wrong side of that five. And by saying wrong side, it means he goes to the left side of the table, and that pocket is not open, which would mean he has to go has to take on the seven eight combination. He wanted to draw towards that seven, and he's just landed almost tied to that seven. Drops his head in yeah. in disgust. There might be a window here, though. You can see how close it is. Mm -hmm. I think he's gonna loom over the side of the table, maybe like a some sort of a PK shot. <laughs> Spawning with the tip of his cue mm. anywhere in that area would have been for enough, but. Um, I mean, yeah, can we actually see his angle with the 7 and the 8? Mm. Mm, tough to tell. Yeah. But has he any other option? I think, I mean, it's it's makeable. It all depends on uh, also the amount of throw you get on the 7. As mm -hmm. you're, like, cutting the 7, it, it might throw the 7 off angle. The only other alternative I can see is clip the 7 thin and try to snooker it behind the 10. No, he's going for it. Mm -hmm. Just to watch uh, the 9. I mean, obviously the shot must be gone, otherwise why yeah. even bother, you know? There's no point in playing a, a hopeful shot if you know it's I the angle is not on. So I, I assume it's set. But will the the seven throw uh, if he plays it from that side of the table? One of the most favorite words of our co-commentator Pascal de Smith: throw. He plays with a lot of throw. <laughs> Unfortunately, Pascal couldn't uh, be here today, and the uh, same is for Joris. other commentator Joris, Graham, and Gethin. Yeah. Gethin is working on his boat and Pascal is celebrating his daughter's birthday, Rosie. Lovely lady. Hope you are well guys, if you are uh, tuned in. Meanwhile, good shot played there by Mark, had to use a little, uh, a little swerve. Judge to perfection, and uh, if you remember when he was, I think eight six down, when he uh, made the long pot, and then the frame after he played a, a decent couple of shots. I told you, I like his body language. It looks like he's zoomed in, and ever since it was looking like he's uh, taken uh, a three rack lead for the first time in this match. Just uh the way he wants it to go and it's interesting to see whether he can uh, pounce on apply a bit more pressure a little break for the guys oh. right I'm just gonna do a lineup then <laughs> 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 well <coughs> so we're uh, what's this 11-8 uh, 11-8 yeah, eight. Eight, yeah 19 wrecks underway mm-hmm I think it's time to uh, have a short break. Yeah, short break. I'll just but I'm uh, pop out. I'll see you in a minute.
I wanted to say maybe get some predictions of you viewers here curious to see who you support and who will think you will win uh, set it up in uh, Facebook So you can send your votes in through the Facebook chat and the in the live stream you will see a poll coming up where you can put in your votes and uh, in the meantime I'm going to try if, if I have enough uh, time to uh, set up uh, the raffle. see let me see yeah I just mentioned before that I'm doing a couple of raffles and this week was the raffle was for of is for uh, a VM billiards shaft carbon shaft 50 numbers I'm gonna spin the wheel now I'll take the camera here Just to show that we are doing this live, this is no recording. I'm gonna do this live here in the stream. To all the people who have participated in this raffle, good luck. And you'll just see now which number will win. And the winning number is number 33 number 33 which means Mats Voorhoeven Mats Voorhoeven number 33 Mats Voorhoeven congratulations uh, you can contact me for all the details how to get your shaft it's a shaft with custom options like the the joint pin the tip plate and so on the diameter of the shaft so much for over congratulations and we will wait until two players have come back Yeah, by participating in the in the raffles, you also uh, show your support for Orange Forks, of course, and have a good uh, chance to win a Q, a shaft, a Q case, just uh, by a, sh a short donate of a small donation. So I know uh, <coughs> Kevin was outside taking a smoke he's back to take on the, the match again we're gonna resume with the match now and uh, don't forget you can put in your votes in the Facebook poll is there any results so far just checking yeah yeah obviously Mark is leading the poll at the moment, as he is also leading in the match, 11-8. So Mark has 75% of the votes saying that he wins. But I'm sure the Belgian supporters of Kevin don't agree. OK, 
Okay. There's one thing that's been that I noticed that is that Kevin is actually wrecking the one, two, three in front. I'm not sure if the players have any made any um, agreements on that. So uh, let's see if the next uh, wreck, the next break from Kevin is also one, two, three on top. Yeah, so both players just returned from the short break. Also, if you've just joined us, we are live here in Goes South in Netherlands. Sport Pub is the venue hosted by Vincent Payman. Major shout out to him. And this stream is obviously brought to you by S Orange Port, Orange Forks <laughs> production. Excuse me, I know <laughs> I gained some pounds, but <laughs> I'm not a Orange Pork yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, forgive me for my <laughs> pronunciation no this stream is uh, brought to you by Orange Forks production uh, completely free and if you, as you can see maybe in the banner underneath your screen if you appreciate this free stream free stream and you want to support us you can send a donation through PayPal and the address will shortly appear it's jimmy at orangeforks.com uh, also you can uh, there's a faster way even if you're watching via YouTube there's a thing called super chat there's a dollar sign symbol if you look at the bottom right in the chat you just click on that and the rest will take care of itself um, so yeah if you've just joined us welcome it's 11.8. These guys been level poised all the way through. And I think uh, Kevin was actually leading 8.6 at one point. And now Mark has gone on a five rack streak. Uh, fun, interesting though. I just bumped into him in a short interval and uh, he was saying he's not. I was actually wrong. So I thought I said a uh, couple of uh, racks back that. Uh, I was uh, liking what I was uh, seeing in mm -hmm. terms of body language and and whatnot, and uh, we actually said the he said the exact opposite. He said he's not really feeling it, Joe. <laughs> and um, although obviously the knowledge is there, I mean, how could it not be? He's been practically playing uh, eighty percent of his life pool, so every shot is there in the book. But uh, he's not. He's he just he's he feels in his own word. He's not even at 60% in terms of touch and feel. No, but I, I mean, you can see that uh, he's lacking the the rhythm. I mean, sure, he has the knowledge, he has the the abilities, you know, the capabilities, but he's just missing tournaments, matches, you know, league matches, whatever. You need competitive pool to uh, yeah to be at top of your level. Yeah, I think. Uh, the term ring rust is uh, one th that comes uh, to mind mm -hmm. to uh, s um, complement what you're saying exactly. Yeah, it's a real thing. You need competitiveness to keep yourself sharp. But hey, at the other uh, at the other side, he's uh, this is his third feature match. So of all the guys we've had recently, he's played the most Except matches. Jan. Oh yeah, Jan also. <laughs> and Jan has also notched up the, the most racks. I mean, he's yeah. won all but one. I mean, he lost that thriller against uh, Nick van den Berg, 30-29. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, Jan has uh, notched up uh, quite a few frames, or racks, I should say. Yeah, racks. We're watching pool. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't want to <laughs> hear the the word snooker if he's uh, dodged a ball. <laughs> he's okay. high. He's hidden his ball. You no. say <laughs> he's hooked him. Hooked him. Oh yeah. That's the the especially the 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 term from the U.S. He's hooked, he's hooked him. him. Oh yeah. We'll keep that in. Uh, and that's why 
I think, I believe that uh, Mike Siegel's uh, <coughs> nickname is, I think he has two known nicknames. I think the one is the mouth, which is very obvious why, because he's always talking du during the match. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is, uh, I think, Captain Hook, because he was uh, yeah, hooking his players uh, that well. I think that's uh, yeah. what I remember. Maybe play people in the chat can uh, help me out with that. Yeah. If I did remember that correct, or am I totally off? Well, one thing uh, we can be uh, we can agree upon is uh, Mike Siegel. His status in the pool world is uh, enormous. Multiple U.S. Open champion played the who's who in pool and uh, done some great things well I want to uh, share some things if you don't have you haven't read it is in the in the Facebook chat obviously when you're watching on YouTube you don't see the Facebook chat of course yeah so there were two people uh, uh, there was a player looking for a side bet Tom Penrose mm -hmm. from Penrose Q's and uh, he wanted to put a side bet on Mark. Uh, he's looking for somebody to place a side bet on Chris. And before he uh, mentioned it, uh, of before they took the b bet on, uh, Tom mentioned that if he would win the bet, uh, half of his uh, winnings would go to uh, Sport Pepgoes and the other half of his winnings will go to Orange Forks. Chris van, Mechle, Chris van Mechelen from VM Billiards has taken on the side bet and has said the same. So actually, the only two winners in these bets in this bet are Sportbegroes and Orange Forks. What a great way to show your yeah, support. Yeah, and, and pool, if I may add, because uh, it's, a, it's a great gesture by these gentlemen. Uh, it's uh, evident that they uh, love the sport as much as we do. And uh, we can't uh, thank you enough, guys really appreciate this in the meantime i don't know what mark was playing here push out he, he played, played the push out Ooh, it's a foul yeah yeah so just to finish that yeah amazing work guys truly appreciate it yeah and just uh, gotta love these guys yeah and then uh, like i said before it's uh, it's about supporting whatever you have a passion for supporting your local supporting whoever because we're all in this together. Everybody's been affected by the COVID pandemic, so uh, we can support each other in whatever way, shape or form. I salute you, whoever out there. Yeah, so Kevin played the obvious, trying to, he couldn't do a great deal, but uh, unfortunately he didn't hook as I should use the <laughs> word, <laughs> Mark. And it seems like mm, a bit unfortunate. I thought he played a great shot, but uh, no hook there. Speaking of hooks, Rico Verhoeven tonight. Yeah. Surely he's going to retain his title. Yeah. It was a... I wouldn't say last minute uh, substitution, but yeah. The, what was it called? Uh, ben Sa Sadiq? Jamal Ben Sadiq, yeah, yeah. He pulled out. Yeah. Back injury. Hmm. But it's a four man tournament now, so. That'll four be man tournament? Yeah. Two other contenders, and so with uh, Rico, three contenders. Mm -hmm. And then, so they have like a semi final, and then the winners of the first matches will proceed to play, uh, fight for the title. Okay, so they play two of they they play they <laughs> fight <laughs> two fights, yeah, right, yeah, to, for yeah, the winner. Yeah. So it's a mini K one uh, version. Yeah, it is, and uh, that's that's gonna be from I think eight nine. I don't mm. I'm not sure. I think maybe nine. Pay per view, of course. Pay per view. Although, I know a lot of people <laughs> have many ways mm. of watching stuff. Yeah, that's that's just yeah. You can't you can't uh, promote that. Uh, yeah. Uh, prevent that so uh, yeah, yeah as well yeah. yeah that's why we just do it for free and you can donate whatever you want took the words out of my mouth yeah, yeah.
And it all started off with money battle in uh, back in Ames Turner. Yeah. That's why I also mentioned uh, Kev, uh, Melvin, Melvin, uh, our own MC mm -hmm. DJ and also commentator. Cause he used to commentate as well. Um, man, that was fun. <laughs> that yeah. was fun. I was watching some some old uh, files uh, on some some hard disks and uh, so came across some old pictures. So you doing commentary with Graham, I think. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, you were not uh, you were not in the money battle team from the start, but you no. joined us a little yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. And you actually played the the money battle against Rani. Uh, Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, As a I nail biter. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, no. F I mean, fun story is I actually didn't know Rani. I have mm -hmm. obviously heard of his name, but one when I oh, was scheduled, great shot. great shot. When I was scheduled to play Rani, I didn't even know a whole lot about him. And uh, as you would do in my position, you look up for some footage. I saw f a few of his matches. <laughs> uh, if there were any. No, he yeah. had a, he had a lot of. I mean, he had. A, yeah. By the time I played him, he already had like four money games on money battle. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. he uh, he was unbeaten, and um, yeah, it messed with me. I mean, mixed signals by people saying, "Well, uh, I favor you, whatever, or not." And uh, and I I I know Ronnie now very well. We've practiced so many times. Uh, he beat me. Uh, yeah, the score is a nail biter, but if you look back, and I wouldn't suggest you because it wasn't a high profile in terms of a level, you should have beat me there. I don't know, maybe 15 4 or something. Mm -hmm. The only reason I got close is because of the some of the unforced errors he made and let me back into the match. And uh, yeah, it's safe to say I was far from my best, but uh, that's no to no discredit to what Rani was doing, he was just dominating the match and he. Mm -hmm. And I think the the right player won. Nicked me of 350 euros. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. <laughs> but uh, no, it's where our friendship started. And uh, so actually, you have donated to Orange Fox in a way. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years later. <laughs> yeah, no, but it was great fun. I mean, we t I'm talking about my experience, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, that aside, I mean, I, I do remember the venue. I do remember. I think. Uh, well, I only played one. Oh no, I played two. I played also Cyril Ledoux. Um, I think the one I played, Cyril, you, you guys even um, arranged uh, someone extern to do the camera work, yeah, and you yeah. we had like smoke machines yeah, yeah. coming up and music. It was fun, man. It was amazing. And also, uh, just a quick mention of Harry Haralampidis, Har owner uh, of Ames, where we had so many great events. <laughs> yeah, it was fun a times, man. Good fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, you're probably thinking about the barcodes you <laughs> had. <laughs> no, we had good fun there. Yeah. yeah, it was the start of it all. As uh, from there, I mean, we we had the idea to provide the platform. Players can play each other, challenge each other. We provide uh, two streams at that time already. I know. Yeah, and even with uh, two camera angles, uh, yeah. eventually, and uh, also uh, give them a, like a yeah, you know. Uh, platform yeah but the experience of playing in an arena um, with the lights and uh, cameras uh, smoke machine like you said mm -hmm. it's pretty cool you it was awesome man. your it own uh, awesome. walk on uh, song mm -hmm. and from there on we it just evolved into uh, yeah, Orange I'll Forks Productions I will lend you into a secret you know actually Fauzi nicked my walk on song mm. he nicked my walk on <laughs> song I mean Oh my God! What was the guy again? This is a Dutch rapper, right? Yeah, Archie Doni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Lemonier. Yeah. We were talking about it, like uh, you know, two, two guys having fun. We, were, we I used to practice a lot with uh, Fauzi. In fact, I think 80% of my practices locally nearby was always with Mar uh, Fauzi. And um, yeah, we were talking about yeah, if you would. Uh, if you would uh, be at an event where you had a walk-on song, what would you choose? <laughs> and then uh, I said, yeah, I'd, I'd go for Archie Donny because that's like a gangster song to walk mm. on. Next thing I know, <laughs> he's walking out of <laughs> the song. I look at him, I said, Jesus, what are you doing? <laughs> now I can't choose this, can I? Yeah, some good fun. Yeah.
So you can see here in this angle, the four five are dead set. So although mm, he would have liked to be off the rail to mm -hmm. control his cue ball, he doesn't really want to go towards that side of the table. Maybe we can. I mean, there's a slight angle in this pot where he can go off the middle, but. I'm just trying to see if the 4 5 combination is that on, but I don't think it's that on. Mm, there, is a there is a little room between them, so mm. he, can, uh, <coughs> he can make it, uh, so to speak, the angle. Mm -hmm. But be surprised if he doesn't make it, though. And that's coming from someone who can make a combination to save his life. Yeah. Yeah, the old cliche, it's not about making the ball, it's about controlling the other part of the shot. Cue ball and object ball. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now luckily with the new rules, I say luckily because I hate combinations mm -hmm. that mm, finish the uh, rack. Even if he makes the 4-10, the 10 will be respotted. He, he can continue, he will continue obviously if he makes the combination, but uh doesn't mean rack is over. And if I look at it, the 4 ball will go away from the cue ball a little if he makes it, I think. Yeah, there you see it. No, now he's in trouble. Yeah, <coughs> 10 comes <coughs> on the table. Yeah. He'll block the, the four ball. What I would say is though, it looks like, it can be deceiving, but it looks like the nine in makes the top left a big pocket. Mm. Maybe no, I don't think so. The, the I think the, f the nine ball is too far from the from the pocket. True, but if he uh, if he misjudges, misjudges it and hits the long rail, he might go in off the nine. Uh, that's but I agree with you. Ah, saying. okay, from that side, yeah. But uh, yeah, so he needs to queue down if he wants to attack. Come off the side rail and play position on the six. It's a funny shot because l most of the time when you play shots like these, you think, well, I play some, some sort of a shot to nothing. But I think rather thinking that way, you should go all out and don't think. Wow. That's and he a good shot. And he went all out. Yeah. I mean, if you look at his cue ball, it's not yeah. glued to the rail. I like that, uh, the way he played that shot. Inside spin, off two rails. Very well controlled pot. And much needed as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't want uh, Mark to run away with uh, a bigger lead. Like I said, at the top of the show, Mark is a great front runner. He can really bully you. And uh, also important for Kevin to show his metal. No, it's that was a great shot to to pull off at this time. <coughs> Let's see if he can uh, put his tenth rack on the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. There is a glimpse of uh, the venue, as you can see. Unfortunately, it's Completely lonely. Empty. It's all yeah. it's all empty. Yeah, I'm gonna take a toilet break. I'm gonna be back in. Yeah. It. I'll just flick the camera switch. Yeah, just to continue what uh, Jimmy was saying. Um, um, yeah, just to continue what Jimmy was saying is... Um, unfortunately, these, these times have been proven uh, very tough on many business owners and uh, I think I speak for on behalf of uh, any Q Sports uh, fan that we hope to be back in action safe and sound meanwhile Mark does put a ball of his break but uh, not something to go for though he's called a kick shot That's a good shot. What's he faced with? I think it's time to play uh, safe here, though. Failed to cover the three there. 
So Kevin's got a good chance here to put Mark in trouble. A lot of balls to hind the three. Or at least block the path to the three. trying to think I'm thinking we might screw it in off two rails and maybe put the four in the side we might even have a angle on the four maybe just nudge the nine ever so slight from the rail doesn't really have to though Play the up and down shot. Mm, I think it's too too steep to cut it in the middle. Has to be in the bottom right corner. Glad to inform you I'm uh, joined back by Jimmy back in the booth. Yeah, if you hear something in the back, like a, a fan, <laughs> <laughs> it's because we are, uh, yeah, be because uh, Vincent has turned on the heater a little mm -hmm. more, a little higher. You can, uh, no. uh, yeah, just uh, because of, uh, we were talking about the empty pool club, as you see in the background. Yeah. yeah. The, you, you don't put the heater on the whole day and also we're just sitting here we're not actually walking around the table swinging our back arm with a cue in our hand so that also doesn't really help yeah the eight does pass the ten so you think one good positional shot here from the five to the six would pave the way for Retaining that three g three rack lead, nice played positional shot there by Mark. Yeah, once again checking what sort of an angle he wants to leave himself on the eight because uh, obviously the nine looks pretty firm glued to the rail. So he kn knows the importance of uh, leaving himself on the correct angle on the 8 after the 7 screwed across the face of the 10 not landed perfect on the 10 ball no it should be fine yeah so once again retained his lead three racks yeah so far so good
there you see it I mentioned this before and uh, I'm not sure if uh, Mark is, is aware of that but Kevin is wrecking one two three uh, every yeah. time every time okay and normally that's not allowed but I'm not sure if they made any uh, agreements on that so mm -hmm. it's okay interesting point though is is it like what's what's stated in the rules in in terms of I understand obviously it's not allowed it's called pattern racking but mm -hmm. um, does the rule also include that if you've not uh, discussed this point you can't actually reverse on that well we're, we're not playing a, a, a tournament or a, a, you know an official match so we have our own rules mm -hmm. but during a tournament there can be uh, rules that you cannot uh, do pattern racking mm -hmm. And uh, in other tournaments, ten ball tournaments, sometimes it's uh, uh, the rule is that you have to put the yeah the the one on the on the first uh, position, of course, and then the two and the three on the opposite uh, corners. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the yeah in the triangle. I understand. Yeah. Oh, try to play safe, but he's left the door open for Mark. Yeah, quite a lot of people also favoring Mark in this match. Because you put on a poll, right? Who was yeah. going to win? How many votes did we get in so far? If you I'm going to check now. We got about uh, 30 votes and it's 70% uh, in favor of Mark at the moment. Yeah. That is obviously fed by the fact that... Uh, yeah, Mark is uh, in front. Yeah, and he's be he has been since I eight think six equalizing. Down. Yeah, up to eight eight. Yeah, and, and from there on, he has not been behind. No. Maybe he is a opportunity for Kevin to pick one back. you can see clearly some balls in his way uh, to place his hand comfortable <laughs> it's always funny to me to see how these players are so reluctant to use the rest <laughs> obviously when you play snooker there's no way around it some shots you, you're just gonna need it but pool players always tend to avoid using that piece of equipment but uh didn't really affect the outcome of the shot play to perfection has to be said i'd be looking to leave myself uh, a high angle on the seven here not too high obviously but i wouldn't really necessarily go towards the rail this is like the it seems like a perfect angle to me. Just screw back. Or top through. Also a possibility. Probably a better option. can see almost level so far none of these guys have missed uh, uh, this type of shot but uh, I keep saying it it's not ideal prove no problem for them though and you can see Mark supporting uh, this very venue, this very club where he plays uh, 
Premier League team competition for. Let's have a look at uh, the side angle of uh, Mark's break. The five have just spoiled the party there. Yeah, so he's now looking if whether the two goes into the this bottom side pocket. Other than that, it's hard to see where the two will pot. We try to develop it. Hmm, that's unlucky. I think he deserved more from that shot there. Easy snooker though. Needs to watch out. Kevin will have no problem hitting this two ball. It's all about getting the enough separation or at least leave the two ball in a such a position where Mark can't attack the balls. By the looks of things you'd say whoever pots the two is favorite to take this rack. Yeah, his options were a bit limited there for Kevin, but I think he will settle for this. Should expect to be in trouble after this shot though. Went for the bank with a lot of sight. He played it with a lot of sight to play position mm -hmm. on the three. Yeah, he went all out. Attack there. Main feature of his game. He's an attacking player, Mark. I'd say the only good thing of that uh, hanger he's left, uh, Kevin, is his cue ball is glued to the cushion, so Kevin can't really do a lot, a great deal with his cue ball, uh, other than play the uh, with top and a little bit of left spin. It's all about getting position on the three here. It's going to be a safety. Which means Mark will get back to the table. What's he looking at? I'm not sure. I think he's trying to Is he play the carom. Play the three of the seven? seven? Yeah. No. Is it even possible like that? I'm not sure from that angle, but uh, well, he he thinks he it is, so let's see. Ooh. Wow. It was even too far. Mm -hmm. Goes to show his creativity as well, though. I mean, how many players would have even thought about that shot? I certainly wouldn't. So what do you, what do you do here? Maybe attack, and try to put the four in the opposite 
corner pocket. I don't know, it's a tough shot this one. Oh, he's gone for the middle. Kevin also supporting uh, the Orange Forks production logo on his sleeve. Yeah, that was actually uh, the, the shirt, the jersey is made by uh, Chris, Chris van Mechelen. And he has uh, chosen to print the Orange Forks Productions logo on the left sleeve for Kevin as well. It's a pretty cool gesture, of course. <coughs> this uh this four five combination is connected i think it's one of those when you connect you're almost guaranteed to make the um the combination so yeah, and he definitely wants to make this because he's he's left kevin back into the match mm. now he made it but yeah you can see his uh, disappointment yeah. he tried to control his cue ball so i think he tried to play with a little draw mm -hmm. This <laughs> as you open your can, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This means uh, he's faced with another difficult part here. I assume he's gonna go for the top left. Yeah, I think so. Looks like it. It's there. Yeah, I was anxious to look if yeah. the the, <laughs> <Good laughs> the cubo wouldn't glue to the seven. Mm -hmm. Keeping it simple, not doing anything extraordinary, just give himself a nice angle for the eight in the middle. Also something um, worth noticing or um, pointing out when you when you pick up this game, don't try to over uh, compensate with your position. Just keep it nice and simple. Especially if you have a putting, uh, putting ability like uh, Mark or Kevin. Mm -hmm. They both are very good yeah. in what they do. So sometimes the best thing you can do is just keep it simple and uh, just you know play the shot in front of you. Jimmy just checking up with uh, Mark's girlfriend. You can see in the back of your uh, screen here. Just keeping a close eye. So far, so good. Let's have a look. Well, I think most of the breaks Kevin has produced. I mean, he's, he's controlling his cue ball a lot better now. Did he wreck uh, one, two, three again? I didn't, didn't, even, I didn't no. even check, no. but uh, I wouldn't be surprised. If I mean, if he's done it the mm. entire match, yeah. what wouldn't he do now? Well, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, as yeah, is there's no any rules between them, so it's mm -hmm. okay. And if Mark's uh, not making any comments on that, it's, just, it's fine. It's just something that I noticed. So I'm not saying uh, that I noticed and that it's bad. No, I just noticed it as mm -hmm. a commentator seeing the the balls, how he wrecks them. Mm -hmm. But it's always a sensitive uh, point of discussion, in especially in pool, because uh, there's a lot of uh, advantage to be gained if you master the break mm. yeah. or a pattern in the break. But I'm with you. I mean, if they haven't 
Well, let me put it this way. If Mark does not uh, even talk about it, then obviously yeah. it's not a problem, is it? No, and, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to shed any uh, bad uh, light on, uh, on Kevin. No, I j it's just that I noticed it. Uh, so I'm just wondering if any other uh, of the viewers didn't uh, did see it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some. I see a comment of Wilco Bullens asking why is this pool, s pool club open? Well, the pool club is not open, oh. and this uh, this match is uh, organized under strict rules of COVID, and with um, yeah the official permission from the local government here in Goes to have this and the only people in this club are actually these two players and uh, and us and uh, and Vincent the owner yeah so the club is not open just to prevent any misunderstandings um not sure what you mean with your comment Olivier not only one of them has a pattern rack with that do you mean that uh, mark is doing the same i'm just uh, I, I didn't take any note on mark's rack so maybe they both do uh, their rack the same then it's then it's perfectly fine of course mm -hmm. and like uh, i said there's nothing wrong with it i've just noticed it <laughs> 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 as i'm watching this match closely the whole time <laughs> <laughs> but by saying that uh, you're almost at half of the racks no no no, no, no sorry not yet. well I mean if uh, Mark and he should slot this 10 easily he's now reached the halfway mark and also for the first time he's taken a four rack advantage and uh just coming back to the comment he made uh, when I ran into him in the short interval. If he's not even uh, at 60 percent in terms of confidence and feel, it can only be better. You th you think? forgot to watch the um, the wreck of uh, Mark <laughs> so I will watch it here on YouTube oh yeah, yeah of course you can uh skip back well it's not working yeah, bad reception here <laughs> I know some players would would just stick you behind the three here. By the way, I'm not mentioning any names or so, but uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> some players would. And yeah. I mean, why? Uh, yeah, exactly why. But uh, yeah, as you can see, he's pointing his tip right at the head spot. There's a gap between the seven and the ten, so it's very important that he just judge the pace of this yeah. Uh, yeah. it looks fine it's nice uh, nice comment from uh, Jan van Lierop in the YouTube chat he's watching the live stream as well we could say he's the main money battle player of, uh, of uh, the recent times here for uh, ooh, what's this yeah. As he played a lot of uh, money battle matches. Yeah, also uh, congratulations on, uh, on on Jan, which ah, is yeah, only justified. Yeah. He's uh, secured his p place back in the national squad. I don't think I've known someone who works harder on his game on and off the table than besides Niels, of course, uh, Jan in the recent times and uh, ever credit. Yeah, it's you're right. It's... Uh, it's the old cliche, hard work pays off, but it really does. And uh, also, 
last thing about on Jan, I think he's improved vastly. He always was talented and he dominated dominated <laughs> the the bigger part of uh, his career in the juniors. But um, I think nowadays rarely has uh, any weaknesses in his game, and that's uh, that's the biggest compliment you can give any player. Yeah. Which means they just work on whatever needs fixing. Yeah, if you haven't seen the match, uh, Jan versus Nick, uh, you have to watch the last rack and scroll back just to the score of 29-29 and fully enjoy the last rack, which was, yeah, for the, for the neutral viewer, it was really, really cool. Yeah, I know. I mean, when when we tune in or we when we do these long travels, mm. all we hope for is to see a thrilling match. I'm sure <laughs> Jan wouldn't uh, yeah. mind watching that back. But uh, <laughs> yeah. other than that, I uh, fully uh, agree with what you're saying. And that was a spectacular, spectacular match. And uh, also a shout out to Nick van der Berg, of course. Yeah. I mean... No, it's but yeah. Testament to yeah, there's two players. Yeah, I mean the the couple of difficult shots he pulled out the bag under severe pressure. Wow, mm. how unlucky is this one? Yeah, it looked to be yeah. like a perfect break. Yeah, two ball in front of the pocket, but and then at the last moment the six comes in between. But this is risky, and and, and though completely justified his reaction, this is risky. But yeah. because a lot of players tend to feel as if the table is working against them but it just doesn't work like that it sometimes you just have to wait patiently for your for your opportunity to arise and just pounce and he you're absolutely right and he's absolutely right to be disappointed he is unlucky there but uh i mean he's, he's still got a shot here mm -hmm. you you think if he hits the two which is odds on it'd still be at the table and he, he, he could still maybe run this rack, you know? So can't afford to... Ooh. See? I mean, that's... And I understand his reaction, but, you know, honesty, it's a poor shot. He should have al always touched the two there, yeah. at least. And that's the difference when, I mean, if, if it gets to you personally, you will it's like quicksand, we call it, right? You just... Nah, okay. Yeah, I can understand what you're saying, but I'm um, not fully agreeing on that because it's it's a natural reaction you know to be a bit, little bit disappointed if, if you break that well and then you know you know that actually you have a really good chance to go uh, for a run out and then at the last moment the six comes in between and yeah, that's just unlucky no, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying his, his reaction is fully justified mm -hmm. I just think the danger in there lies if if you keep um, or if if you let your emotion take mm -hmm. the better of you, that will not work in your favor. Yeah. The 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 the, the ultimate top professionals like a, and I would refer to, but for example, Niels is a great example. Yeah, he will show emotion, but then he will get on he get on, and executes the shot in front of him, and that's what makes him a good a player he is. And uh, but there's still a lot of time for Kevin, of course. Yeah, we're not. We're not halfway. Ah, Mark is halfway. But <laughs> the lot fortunate there. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I'm probably sure, I'm pretty sure he's now sitting in his chair thinking, you see, no. everything he does works perfectly out and everything I do is, uh, is not being paid off. But you really need to avoid those kind of thoughts because they will not help you in any way Easier said than done, of course, <laughs> when, when, when <laughs> yeah. you sat here. But, I mean, that's I'm also a great student of the game and, and, and I've been watching Q Sports ever since I was eight. So if there's something I've uh, noticed is the ability to uh, have a short-term uh, mind that will put you in great stead playing this this game, this sport. So now I will take extra notice on the wrecking. Is it one, two, three? Uh, no. No. 
So <coughs> I'm just <laughs> finding my <laughs> my uh, mouse, my cursor on the laptop. We see. Oh. There you have it. Now it's even in terms of bad luck. Mm. Although I'm not sure if you can call that bad luck. It wasn't uh, a nope. perfect hit on the one. <coughs> Important visit this, I feel, for Kevin. Just to raise any negative thought out of his mind. Get back to the rhythm he showed at the first part, first half of this match so far. Where he looked in well poised and in control with his emotions and with the uh, with the table. One of the loyal viewers from across the pond, Snooker. AKA Snooker, uh, I mean, his full name is Edward Hoffman. Nice of you to join there. 5 a.m. in the morning. Not sure if I would do that on Saturday morning at 5 a.m., but no. <laughs> 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 Just kidding, Snooker. Um, how are you doing in the US? Got anything to do there, or are you just locked inside? Yeah, he, he should fine. be fine. He should I mean, be fine. All he needs to do is focus to make the seven. That's all he needs to do. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Pulls one back. Although I say, I mean, he needs to make the f <laughs> ten, but I, I assume <laughs> he will make the ten. Well, the way he's been playing, I wouldn't see him miss the 10 ball. Mm -hmm. Just what he needed, a little qu quick, easy clearance. Another US viewer, Greg Lamb, saying that he's watching from Chicago, 7 a.m. in the morning there. A lot nice of, of you to uh, tune in, Greg. A lot of activity on Facebook, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, pulled one back. Yeah, five rack deficit. What he'd give for a five back, although it's not possible, of course, because of no. a alternate break. But uh, yeah, well, we had some. I had some comments uh, from people saying, "Okay, why are they playing uh, alternate break in such a long uh, set?" And uh, this way, it's very hard to get uh, back in the match if you're falling behind. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way to put it. On the other side, you have a quicker chance because because of the alternate break to you know mm -hmm. to win your own wreck. But uh, yeah, there's uh, two sides of this, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm also uh, a fan of uh, of winner winner breaks yeah. format. Bling brings a lot of uh, a lot of excitement, uh, and also gives someone the opportunity to uh, really stamp their authority on a match. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're playing well and you're breaking well, you can really take advantage, right? Yeah. And yeah. take a big lead. But um, I don't know. It's uh, I'm just grateful that uh, we're watching a competitive match, and, and I hope uh, it will stay for that towards the end. And uh, <coughs> um, scratch on the break. Kevin is showing a lot more frustration. Understandable, of mm -hmm. course. No. than uh, he was doing. So maybe uh, one of the future uh, money battle matches we can play with a, a, a winner break format if the players uh, also uh, agree. It would be interesting to see how that uh, match would go and if that's uh, more appealing to the viewers and to the to the players. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit. I have to say, I'm a bit surprised, but it probably has to do something with. And a lot of people don't uh, have a pool table at their home, so um, the facilities not being 
able uh, to open due to the pandemic pandemic but uh, i'm surprised that we haven't seen some of the other big names big talents we have you know in netherlands mm -hmm. to mention the guy the likes of ivar uh ifo well ivo featured of course in the in the doubles match but like to see him in a singles match tim de Ruiter, all of I these for a kick shot here <coughs> yeah all of these uh dutch selection uh players it would be nice also for the variety i mean they're all great players by their own right so yeah why not well there was a match uh <coughs> in the pipeline so to speak between uh, Jan and uh, Ivar. Oh yeah, but I heard uh, about due that to one. the COVID regulations, uh, you know, the the lockdown, we couldn't, uh, yeah, couldn't organize that 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 match. And again, this match uh, here was uh, initially cancelled. Was uh, scheduled for uh, Nick versus uh, Kevin. Kevin. Then it got cancelled because of the stricter uh, lockdown uh, situation. Then it was on, then it was off, and eventually uh, Vincent took the initiative to... Uh, oh, he, he played it with inside English, and that's why he missed, I think. Um, Kevin took the initiative to uh, contact uh, the local authorities here to see if he could get a permission to organize this uh, event. You mean Vincent, probably. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what did I say? Kevin. Ah, Vincent, no, Vincent. And... Uh, and yeah, they uh, gave the the green light, and that's why. Uh, and if you just tuned in, yeah. Vincent is the venue holder. So yeah. Just to complete your story, yeah, correct. So that's also uh, to you, uh, Snooker. That uh, that's the reason why we are, why we can play this match here in this uh, this arena in this venue. Otherwise, we couldn't play uh, this. Uh, Everything is in uh, in lockdown. Is closed. All the pool halls. If any, if everything, hopefully, s soon rather than late, returns back to normal, would you be open for a, a, a snooker, money game? Sure. Why not? I'm open to anything. Snooker. Do you have like a three cushion darts? <laughs> whatever. Do you have the software for the for the scoring? Because uh, that's gonna cause a, a challenge wouldn't it mm. for the break and, uh, and oh and we have our own scoring software which was made for uh, snooker as well ah, okay so it's it's in there we used it at the dutch championship snooker in uh, maasluis yeah, yeah yeah i think uh, we had it uh, or the the programmer set it up like that that you could see the the current break and oh after the break it gets uh, okay uh, Cool. I was just curious, um, because uh, it's no secret that it's a big passion of mine. So we'll see. Yeah, good, good comment there, Olivier. Like you said, if there's n no rules between the players about pattern wrecking, then it's perfectly fine. That's what I said. And just as you mentioned. I saw this uh, this rack as well that uh, Mark is putting the one on top and the two and the three on the left and right bottom. And that's also a sort sort of a pattern. Although in lots of international tournaments, time ball tournaments, those uh that is the pattern that is actually obligated. Yeah. But thank you for your uh Keen reply. Eye. I think it's important for Kevin to uh, get some sort of grip on this match because mm -hmm. it looks like it's slowly fading away from him. And he's trying ever so hard, but um, it's not really working out for him so far. But he's not out of this. Like I said before, no. <coughs> Mark hasn't hit full gear or full steam ahead, so there's still a uh, lot to play for. Although he isn't uh, six racks in behind, so first thing first, he needs to at least half that uh, deficit, get in within three, two racks, then everything is possible again. Mm -hmm. uh, 
don't scratch. Is that one passing the nine? No, I don't think so. So he might have to play the, the kiss shot. The carom of the one. Yeah. Couldn't control the one enough. I don't think he can cut this one. Can he see a different angle? You're right, Snooker. It's never over until it's over. <laughs> but especially with this score, there's a lot to play for. Oh, he's, he's once again called this <laughs> double bank, yeah. has he? <laughs> I think he won't leave this venue without making one of those. <laughs> Uh, yeah, once again, I mean, I like the idea. It's just <laughs> twice he's he's tried and twice he's left some sort yeah. of a shot. But so this I this time he wasn't that close. No, but I understand the idea. I mean, one could say he's a bit unlucky, or or also in defense say, well, he had different options. I don't know. I think we all know Mark is a very attacking player, so. Maybe instead of criticizing him for that, we can applaud him for that. Mm -hmm. Because there's not that many players that constantly are keen to attack all the time. And he is definitely one of those mm -hmm. dying breeds. Well, I'm pretty sure we we haven't seen uh, the last of uh, Kevin in this match. No, definitely He's been not. playing a lot of uh, money matches. I'm... I'm I don't uh, the sc don't know the score lines, but I know he's been playing a lot of money matches. Yeah, he has. I mean, he he's played. I'll look up for you because yeah. um, it's not actually uh, matches he played on um, Q score where you can actually look back at the score. But no? like I said before, when I um, did some research, background information. You sure it's not on Q score? No, I'm not actually sure, but uh, I can tell you this. Um, since he r returned back to playing pool again, which is roughly five to six months ago from now, mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned before, he took up coaching with jo Johnny van Rijkel. And then he's already played a couple of money games, and, uh, which he's all won, uh, in his own words, against the top of Belgium. De Frasner, De Frasner, I think. De Frasner. De Frasner, Van der Busche. I don't even know this one. De Ley? Oh, Davy De Ley, yes. And Van den Pitten. So that's four Four names already. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's already played against. Didn't see uh, Kastelijn's name in there. Another well, you fantastic. can find a few matches on uh, Q-Score, I'm just checking. Oh, okay, so you can. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, adapted to the COVID uh, face mask. I see that uh, Mark is taking a toilet break. And I tell you what, though. It gives us time to thank the sponsors again. Q-Score, providing the scoring software with a live score in the stream. <coughs> Sport Pub Goes, the host of this event in their pool club, hosted by Vincent Peme. VM Billiards, Kevin van Mechelen, providing a shaft that was won by Mats Voorhoeven in the raffle today. Owner of Sport Cafe. Sport Cafe King, I think. Billiard service Mark Bleek, who does the table maintenance in this club and several other clubs here in Netherlands. If you need anything to be back or be prepared for uh, the time when you want to go back to the pool club, but you have a table at home, for instance, hmm. you can contact Mark and have it fitted the right way. Yes, sir. Uh, you wanted to uh, say something. You wanted to share something about the the matches from. Uh, no, Kevin? well, oh. so yeah, he's won all those four names I've just mentioned, mm -hmm. and uh, I just wanted to mention because uh, 
uh, one of his close friends, uh, who is also one uh, one of the many guys that support Kevin, mm -hmm. is the owner of Cafe Sport King, ah, Dave okay. Renault. Okay. Close friend of uh, Kevin. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, I wanted to point that out as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm looking at the statistics uh, statistics in uh, in in Q score, but actually it's not that uh, easy to read. I think so he's played a couple of matches, but uh, that's, that's difficult, difficult to read. Seventy-five percent won. It says nine out of twelve matches. Yeah, in percentages, but I want to see you know the the oh overview the of the matches. If you can scroll down, you can usually see. Um, there's a, I mean, if he's played money games or uh, let's say challenge matches, mm. it's called in Q score. You can uh, see the exact score because. So it says here, ten ball. He was won five out of six matches. Yeah. yeah. So if he's nine yeah. ball, three out of four, eight ball, one out of two. Yeah, but these it's tournament statistics, so these these can be like a, a house tournament or whatever. Mm. Yeah, but there there were not many matches in uh, tournaments in 2020. Can, can you click on his profile? Because you can see who is his profile. Oh, the, the, the home page. Because sometimes you can see um, the most played opponents if you scroll down. Yeah, it was... Uh, Rashid Lamahasni and Oop. Anthony van den Buschke. I remember that Anthony went over to his place, I think. Not sure when he played Stefan van der Plasje or... Moritz Laurens, also one of the upcoming players. I think he's playing for Sport with Goes now again. And, uh, Moritz, not sure. <laughs> Cliff Kastelijn. <laughs> who is this Kastelijn you're talking about? Well, let me put it this way. Someone who claims that he has no snooker background, but he's got a velvet smooth cue action that yeah. many snooker players including myself are uh, jealous of that's uh, who Cliff Kosteline is nah, it's not it's not what it used to be <laughs> i've seen him uh, a couple of times on the live stream in he's, the, uh, he's very stiff yeah, i don't yeah. like you never yeah. see a smile in his face that's yeah. the one thing i they Cliff call him also cliff the stiff cliff the stiff exactly <laughs> oh dear Yeah, Patrick, Patrick Bergpas. Uh, I know it's, uh, I know it's the money matches he's been playing at uh, Ronald. But I was just trying to find the statistics, and uh, yeah, there's not. I don't think it's complete, so I'm not sure if all the matches are in Q score. <laughs> but thanks for your comment. Ah. Uh, Yeah, so I also received the comment that most of the previous money matches of Kevin have are not on Q-score. Mm -hmm. Could be for obvious reasons. Yeah. But that's another thing, like maybe some countries, I don't know the exact rules, but I mean, it can be seen as gambling, isn't it? Because you're, you're playing for money. Really? <laughs> Well, uh, officially, even when you play uh, a, a regular tournament and you, you win prize money, mm -hmm. you have to uh, uh, put it in your uh, tax uh, statement. Okay. So professional pool players, uh, you know, all around the world, they have to put in their prize money as income. Which is harsh because it's... Uh, you. And it all depends if you're playing uh, in, in uh, foreign countries... You can also choose to pay your taxes there. Okay. And sometimes it's cheaper to pay your tax, for instance, in the U.S. or in China or whatever. And I then, uh, yeah. I, I thought in Ireland, I just found out this recently, there's zero commission if you earn money out of gambling. I didn't even know this. Yeah, that's why a lot of poker players are 
officially based in Ireland. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if it's still the case. Because I d <laughs> my profession is I do uh, w parquet, wooden floors, and I was uh, installing a herringbone floor for this guy in uh, Amsterdam, Amstelveen, a uh, fancy area. And uh, I just asked, you know, out of curiosity, I said, oh, what do you do for a living? And he said, well, I just watch sport. I said, well, I've watched... I also watch sport ever since I was eight. So, mm -hmm. no, he said, well, that's actually my job. I said, okay, so you're like a bookie. He said, well, something like that. Mm. And uh, ah, so but he, he was he was yeah. based in, in Ireland, and, and but that's something Officially. he told. Yeah, yeah, that's what he told. He said, well, if you're based in Ireland, you don't have to pay yeah. any commission. In Netherlands, uh, I'm not sure, but it's it's a lot. So actually, he's setting up the spread, or how do you how do you call it, the the odds. Yeah. Eisbrand Bergis also watching the live stream. Look at this. You oh well, um, sorry, mm. never mind. What's that? Where is it? Cliff. Ah. Uh, yeah, Cliff is home. Cliffy. Yeah. The Cliffmeister. When will we see him back in action? Yeah, yeah. Well, during uh, league matches, which obviously are not taking place at the moment, and uh, the clock, uh, the Mess Q Stella Artois Open. Yeah. We hope, uh, I, I've heard from the club owner, Gaetan, that they are hoping to have a tournament end of the year if that could take place under uh, the new regulations. Open tournament, yep. open for entry, okay, cool. There you go. If you're watching this and you're eager to compete, here's your chance. Keep an eye on the, the social platform. Uh, this one of the stat men has woken up in Amsterdam, Kevin Den Hartig. He says, 2016 and 2521 to Rashid Lahamsi, Laham, Lamhas, Lamhasni. Lamhasni. No, sorry, sorry, Rashid. And 3023 from Van den Busse, Anthony. It's the dark horse from the Klokke. Uh -huh. Good pl pool player. He used to work behind the bar. I'm not sure if he still works there. Uh, not, not at the moment, of course. <laughs> he does. <laughs> but I know he plays there. I saw some challenge matches between him and Cliff also on the live stream. We might stick that one in. El Stefo. <laughs> <laughs> Or uh, Cliff Meister Cliff from, uh, the Cliff from Meister. American Pie. <laughs> 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 Not so sure if he if his wife is uh, really <laughs> happy with that nickname, but uh <laughs> ah, well, it's just a nickname. <laughs> so, how many viewers do we have? Uh, Combined, so on Facebook and YouTube, uh, I'm putting you see. through the ringer here. Uh, it's about 85 on YouTube. I can't see it on uh, on uh, on, uh, on Facebook. It's a bit uh, strange uh, with the new producer stream live thing. Yeah. No. You have to scroll up. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, oh, 100 on Facebook. So 100. it's about 200, uh, almost 200 in total. Ah, come on, that could be more. Could be better, could be better. What do you else got to do on uh, Saturday afternoon when uh, there's not so much open and you can't? Yeah. You so have to be in your home before 9. So if you haven't done yet... Push the stream. 
like and share the stream for us guys and girls and women <laughs> and boys <laughs> and if you're in between <laughs> oh oh sorry yeah i forgot it's uh 2021 I have to, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> off topic and the neutral uh <laughs> yeah genders <coughs> a lot of people uh obviously interested in betting on this match side bets has been seen previously in the in the poll as well right over 70 <coughs> percent favored mark well easy to say now of course when he's already uh, ahead of stream mm -hmm. uh, ahead of steam but um don't count this kevin uh, no out just yet i mean if he's inherited anything of his f of his dad it's sheer grit i mean his father uh some of the stories people tell about well, how he was at the table is uh, nothing short of amazing, you know? And he's got that same DNA coursing through his veins, so I would imagine uh, he's quite the fighter himself. Ooh, where's that cue ball oh, going? That's harsh, that's harsh, man. Wow! That's really harsh. I mean, you. You could try that a million times. I mean, you might not even get close once, but uh, that's the scenario now. And if you're Mark, you really want to punish these little slices of bad luck, you know, just to inflict a bit more mental damage on your opponent. <laughs> I didn't have the chance to uh, talk to Mark after the first mid uh, mid session interval they had i mean he was saying at that point in time where he for the first time took a four four frame gap for rack gap um <laughs> that he was uh, he wasn't even on 60% i'm I just curious to see what he would say now mm -hmm. cuz it's so deceiving on the eye i mean if you look at him it, he looks really really comfortable but uh I do I do know one thing on uh, from personal experience even if someone is seemingly playing well it doesn't actually mean they're feeling no. well I've had decent breaks where for the if you would look at it and you go well he's he's buzzing well I can assure you I was ever <laughs> feeling everything except that so that's yeah sometimes it can uh, work out like that even though when you watch Mark here at the table you think well He's cruising, but uh, doesn't always necessarily feel the feel that way for the player. <coughs> Havana Cola in the house, not here, but in Belgium. On a rather large screen as well. Cheers, Cliff. Looking forward to have a few at the bar uh, in the future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no better place at the Klokke. I have to say, I mean, if you've ever been to that tournament, uh, Stella Artois Open is something magical there, man. It's so close. Yeah. You, you can almost reach the player <laughs> when you're uh, yeah. doing commentaries. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I remember when we were doing the first time the live stream there, and then uh, yeah, we were coming in. It's like, oh wow, we're sitting really close to the pool table to the players, so you have to really be careful. Whisper as well, yeah, yeah. 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 I remember that the first time, well and oh that was oh that yeah. was amazing. The first time I uh, went mm. there, I mean, mm. I mean, obviously it's been how many tournaments? Uh, Four or five? Five. Yeah, yeah, five. Yeah. But now. Uh, also, the big international players, they come in, they see it, and they actually, they, they don't mind, you know, we're we are doing commentary, but, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not screaming or yelling. So, they actually uh, accept it as it is, and uh, a lot of uh, positive uh, comments on the tournament, which is yeah, only fair, because the, they put a lot of time and effort in it, both of them, Cliff Kastelein and uh, Gaetan Seldenslag, yeah. the owner. I think uh, also what works in their favor, they're two young 
young, uh, full of energy mm -hmm. persons who, who have a deep passion for what they do. I mean, and that always uh, shows, you know, you can feel yeah. that vibe when you're yeah. there. And that's something that it's, uh, it's very hard to attain. You, I've been to places where the venue is spotless, but somehow it just, yeah. I don't know. No vibes. No vibe. Yeah. And if you go <laughs> to the to uh, to the Stella Artois Open, there's definitely gonna be vibes. And mm -hmm. uh, if you can if you can stay until uh, the last ball has dropped, and then <laughs> <laughs> wait until uh, and you go downstairs to the to the to the bar, then there's definitely gonna happen some magic in the in the night. I remember <laughs> the, the, the th that time, the, the only time I was there. I think Cliff was definitely, I think quarterfinals or maybe even beyond that stage. And then I had a, like a short break, <laughs> and I just walked out and uh, obviously potted. The, I think the winning ball. And mm -hmm. I think the whole yeah. joint went ballistic <laughs> when he potted. That's <laughs> something you can you can't buy. It's like watching Ronnie at the Masters, you know, making an uh, amazing break. Uh, just the whole crowd yeah. erupts. Yeah. That's amazing if you. If you get and have a setting like that, that's uh, yeah, fun times, man. Yeah, if if you haven't been there, the, the club is uh, three floors: ground floor, second floor, a uh, first floor, and second floor. The pool tables are on this first and second <laughs> floor, but downstairs is the is the bar. It's a big screen. They put up the live stream on the on the big screen, and it's really. Yeah, a lot of people are watching there, and especially when when uh, one of the Belgian players uh, is is on, then uh, so definitely uh, some uh, intense cheering and <coughs> in the in the in the bar downstairs, <laughs> which is really cool. Yeah. So n if you have uh, if the tournament is happening end of the year or end, because that was the plan so far. To have one end of the year, oh, um, unexpected miss there. Yeah, and I mean this is not a good sign. I mean, mm. if you if we go back in the kick shot, uh, Mark was playing. It was really a poor shot when he when he gave ball in hand, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. Kevin has not done a great deal with it. He's already trailing seven racks. He really should be Ooh. punishing those errors for Mark. I feel. At first glance, I thought it was a good shot, putting the four ball there, but it just pops out, and now it's an open chance for uh, for Kevin. What I wanted to say about uh, Stella Artois Open at the uh, uh, end of the year, the plan is to have uh, an addition, and then, uh, if all goes well, beginning of next year as well. So uh, if you have a chance and you want to uh, participate in this great tournament, then... Uh, Keep an eye on their Facebook page so you don't miss uh, the announcements. We will share it on our Facebook page as well as we are providing the live stream. Do you uh, know what? On that previous shot, I thought he might use the 9 to yeah. give it a nudge because it's blocking the 7. Yeah. No, that's what I thought too. Yeah. Um, so he's still... Um, oh, I thought that was... Uh, he's yeah. still presented with that problem, but I don't think it will even get to that. No. As I think he won't take this cut on, because there's no really positional outcome of that shot. Uh, it's a good chance to uh, stick the cue ball behind the ten if he wants. Yeah. Just he just has to be careful not to put the the six by accident, or he has to call it. Or maybe just send it twice across and try to hit hide the cue ball on this bottom reel using the 10 but mm -hmm. also try to control the 6 towards the 9 and the 7 maybe uh, a complex shot but I think yeah. I ac actually w I wouldn't do that I would you know then I would try to play the the, the 6 uh, in the middle of the top uh, short rail I understand yeah. so you don't by accident leave a, leave a pot on yeah fair shout yeah especially with these uh, jump cues nowadays <laughs> Yeah. 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 No, no. That's. I, uh, I don't want to sound like Earl, but. Uh. No, that's. Uh, no, but that's a uh, that's a sensible way of thinking. Mm. And that way, you at least guarantee you he won't run away with the rack. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good shout. But I'd be looking for some sort of pattern that way. 
He's thinking long and hard about this one. Mm -hmm. I haven't detected any call on the six or pretty. Oh, well, uh, there it is. There it is. No, it. Mm. I think he's left it. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well yeah. By yeah. judged by his uh, body language, uh, he's definitely left it. That's a good shot. A lot better shot than it actually might have looked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he he might run away with this mark. Especially due to the fact that uh, let's not forget he's uh, he's given Kevin twice mm -hmm. an open chance in this rack and Kevin has failed to uh, capitalize on that so not many not too many good signs here as J Jimmy will just take a short break yeah so if the alarm bells wasn't ringing already they definitely are now for Kevin. He needs to find something from somewhere. Otherwise, it's hard to see him climb his way back in this match. But in this instance, you can see the two and the three aren't both at the rear end of the triangle. So I think it's safe to say that Mark isn't racking in any pattern. Or at least not in this rack. What's he looking at? Maybe one in the corner. Bottom left. could take the one in the side pocket but it's a, it's a very tough angle and send his cue ball towards there but uh, that's a tough shot to take on of course he doesn't have to if he wants he can buy some time by playing a containing safety but I'd be surprised if Mark would go for a safety here as we know he's a very attacking player so just curious, curious to see. Uh, I think it's bottom left corner then. Just dropped. Follow through. But can he miss the ten? He needs to generate a lot of power in this shot. He's not even going for the straightforward shot. It's called the bank. Oh wow, <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> Some fireworks here by Mark. Great shot. Yeah, if you're his opponent, this is not a good sign. It's, it's looking ever so that he is settling down now, Mark. And he's fighting his rhythm. And we all know, anyone who's known Mark or has seen Mark play, he's ultra dangerous, especially when he's feeling confident. Might take this one in the corner. Oh no, he's going for the side.
as Mark puts that 10 ball away, increases his lead. Nine racks now. It's hard to see some sort of a comeback from here, especially with this format, alternate break. <coughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah, you can see the two and the three, four and the five. Ah oh well. There you see the nine drop. Yeah, he needs a couple of these uh, layouts and breaks, but he also needs to capitalize on them because there's no point in having good opportunities and not converting them into a into a rack. He's taken off his cap, uh, Kevin. Probably had enough. You can see the the three eight combo looks dead set. Well, dead set. I mean, from this position, yeah, it's I think pretty good lined up. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably a safe best bet to play for. Although the four is not looking all ever so inviting, where it's positioned there between the other three balls there. First things first needs to make this combination and hopefully leave himself a shot af after making the 8. Oh, Kevin has uh, taken his uh, cap off. Yeah, I said that as well. That probably he's had enough. Oh, oh dear. No, it's not something he could have used. It's just not working out for him so far. Mm. Yeah, it's a shame. Because the start looked really promising. Yeah. yeah. Snuggle, right? Ooh, that's not enough. I think he can still hit this and make yeah. it. Yeah, it's maybe one of those where he's almost persuaded into taking on the pot There's because almost no other option. Exactly. Sometimes that can actually yeah. work in your favor yeah. because there's no hesitancy. Let's see. Well, he's called the four, so he will be going for the pot. Great shot. shot. Yeah. yeah, that's a great shot. That's all he wanted to have so a shot at the five. And this time he's uh, rewarded for that pot, having good position on the on the five. Yeah, also noticeable, he's picked up his pace. I think it's something he would need to do. Maybe he's just uh, relaxed, 
and uh, also maybe realizing the position he is in he's pretty much relying on mark also to let him back into this match and we've seen uh, a rack ago that mark isn't com um, punishing every little mm -hmm. small error i mean he had two visits two open visits and he failed to convert them but at least he can only do his part and uh, that's just making the best out of his chances so Rene Peters just donated through the super chat SO to Rene Peters one of uh, the founders of attacking pool a fast and in the entertaining pool hope you're doing well and uh, also the founder of the pool school in the south of the Netherlands and organizing the Euro Pool League, which is a pretty cool uh, um, international competition. Teams from Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands competing for that title. And besides that, he's a, a fierce senior division player. Yeah, former European champion as well. Yes. He's uh, he's done quite all right, I would say, on a pool table. And also proud husband of... Oh, not anymore. I, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Awkward. One five combination for Mark here. No, oh, he's not taking it on. Try to play safe. And I'm saying try it as I think he left the gap there. I'm not sure. Oh, no. Kevin is taking his uh, jump cue. Have you seen any jump cue? Uh, jump cue? Uh, jump shot made today, by the way. I don't think so. Yeah, the combination uh, Mark had. He had an easy combination. Ah, yeah, yeah. Jump. <laughs> Which was uh, dead on. Dead on, and then he played a very convincing recovery shot, tight from the rail. Mm -hmm. But in all honesty, maybe I even would have made that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the world champion and missing. Uh, jump shot, so. <coughs> yeah, no, but just to go back on what I was trying to say mm -hmm. about Kevin and he just... I think, I don't know him too well, but I... Uh, from what I'm seeing, from his demeanor, from the show of expression. He's not willing to give up in any stage of this match. No, no, the, the I never thought that uh, would have think that Kevin would give up. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see a interesting safety change here. Can he just this is yeah. a delicate one. Can yeah. if he can really thin. If he can avoid sending the one into the nine and cross over to maybe snuggle behind the ten, that'd be some shot, wouldn't it? But that's a very delicate I I shot. I would try to really play this really thin on the one and, and just try to get the, the, the one up of a sort of cue ball up table. Mm. I would focus okay. on the cue ball here. Oh. I understand the shot you're saying, but I don't like that. That's a yeah, risky yeah. shot for me, especially if you've been struggling throughout the match. Mm. I mean, if you're if you're uh, thinking clear and you're playing 
somewhere near your best, uh, you'd probably nail that shot, what you're saying. But at this point... Problem is, if you hit it too thick, you're going to be really close to the corner pocket. So what is he... I think he wants to bank the, the one up table, send the cue ball Can we see the main from the long rail, and then back to the 10, maybe. I think, yeah, he's trying to... Oh. I don't know. I'm not sure what he tried there, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, no, me I'll tell you what, uh, he'll settle for this one. Well, he did what I said. Send the cue <laughs> up there. <laughs> 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 told you. I told you. Maybe he tried. He might. He maybe tried to send his one ball into the nine. Uh, as I just said, what it worked out. I mean, it's a good shot. This one. <laughs> he gets down and puts it yeah. <laughs> as if it's a <laughs> practice session. Yeah, that's the danger in playing Mark. I mean, if the this guy uh, settles down and uh, gains some confidence, mm. be a brave man to stop him. Mark settling for a longer pot on the three ball. Yes. Just want to come over to the other side. Like that. Should be fine with the five ball near the corner pocket. I was about the same, not sure if the seven passes the eight, but Mark placed the position for the seven in the other corner pocket to answer my question. Funny enough, we didn't have any uh, comments so far from the, the Hickster, the G-Man. Uh, I think he was really busy with the family at home today. Lame excuse, but whatever. Comes, uh, it's easy to say from somebody <laughs> <laughs> without kids. <laughs> 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 but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> from someone who <laughs> has a kid. <laughs> Yeah, well, 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 well. 14.23. Favor of Mark. I'm already eyeing up the, the far snooker table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure <laughs> if we're going to... There you see it. Man. I just hope he can uh, make some sort of a fight of this. Sure. I'm pretty sure. They will. Sorry for the graphics. Good shot again. He's, he's making these uh, shots, the blind to, to the blind pocket. He, he makes them, um, I think, ninety percent yeah. so far. I only saw him miss once this this sort of type this type of shot. I just have a feeling that he's let the hinges go. I mean, maybe just loosen up and 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 just go for it. You know, go out swinging. Yeah. And uh, if if if. Uh, Opportunity Aye. presents itself in time, uh, although he needs to 
cut those errors out. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? But so far, uh, well, let me put it this way. He's out there swinging, but uh, to no avail so far. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. He can definitely see the five. Yeah. And if I was a betting man, I would say he will make this one. This is also different uh, for Mark. He's taking a li little bit more time yeah. than usually. Yeah, I think that's actually a good sign, yeah. which is telling me that he is um, fully involved in this battle. But also a sign, probably, that he's not feeling that comfort comfortable yet. And that's why he's taking a little bit more time. Yeah. Yeah, but the, I mean, uh, an another another factor, of course, it's a different venue, different table, but also a different cloth. As you can clearly see in your screen, this is not a brand new cloth. Mm -hmm. So th they do react different. And I, re I recall a quote of yourself that you prefer uh, a, a bit worn out cloth yeah. rather than a brand new because of the slide and you can implement a lot a lot more side and then maneuver the cue ball better if i'm not mistaken and then yeah you have more grip on the on the on the rails yeah so it plays more natural yeah and that's why uh <coughs> like uh, deb debutants uh, on uh, on a big tournament you know like a uh, euro tour or a uh, uh, european pool championship those kind of things they get ca it's caught it's off guard huh very slippery yeah yeah or what I would say uh, for those who are uh, trying to solve that puzzle, whenever you play on a brand new cloth and a table that plays significantly liver, livelier and, and faster than you're used to, maybe just place your uh, bridge hand a bit closer to the cue ball, a little shorter backswing. Yeah. Uh, that can do miracles for yeah, you. Fair point. And uh, that's coming from someone who is deeply invested in the technical side of mm -hmm. Q Sports and uh, it's done me great favors in snooker so I would imagine it can also benefit you in pool it's a free tip do with it what you want talking about free tips if you're looking for free tips you can uh, look at the YouTube channel of, uh, of our fellow countrymen Niels the Terminator Fine, who's putting a lot of effort in his uh, in his wow in his course online course, great break by uh, by Mark by the way, and uh, he's also posting some free uh, videos on his YouTube channel. It should, uh, you should uh, check it out. He's putting a lot of effort in uh, recording the, the footage and uh, and editing it. It's pretty cool. Uh, and Orange Fox uh, supports him by helping him out with streaming settings and so on. <coughs> Absolutely, and and in his his knowledge and skill and know how what to practice and how to improve your game is invaluable. Doesn't matter what the amount of money is. If you're a serious pool player and you're someone who has high ambitions, you shouldn't be really hesitating. Unless you're already at uh, a similar level, maybe. But uh, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, if Ronnie O'Sullivan put out a, uh, I don't know, a, a uh, course, a, a course, I'll be the first mm -hmm. to pay whatever the price is because uh, I'd love to understand how he goes about his stuff to make his cue ball almost impeccable. Mm -hmm. I'd pay a good, good amount of money for that. Well, talking about the course of Niels. The mental side of pool, I think it's called. Uh, in one of our future raffles, I'm gonna raffle a course in cooperation with Niels. That's so cool. uh, yeah, it's d something different. No a pool cue shaft or cue case or ball sets. This Invaluable time, I'm gonna knowledge. Yeah, I'm gonna raffle uh, one entry <coughs> to his course. 
and it's 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 yeah it's huge and there's so many positive uh, comments uh, on this uh, on this course lots of uh, international pool players have uh, bought bought the course so uh, yeah uh, keep an eye on our uh, Facebook page. If you haven't done so, follow our page, put on the notifications on Facebook so you won't miss out on our raffles. One last thing on that subject. Uh, pool is the absolute epitome of professionalism. I mean, he, he does everything within his power to prepare himself the right way for any event. I mean, you take about any area the mental side, uh, physical side, mm -hmm. practice routines. He's the absolute epitome of professionalism. So if there's someone to look up to, he'd be definitely one of them. And you can ask uh, Fedor Horst, yeah. our uh, current, is he, right? Current yeah. world champion. Who is uh, a big fan of Niels. Niels yeah. is his uh, idol, in fact. So Speaking uh, of Fedor, he bought the course as well. So, yeah. That shows how inv uh, invaluable uh, his knowledge is. Maybe Cliff will one day also buy his uh, course. Yeah. It's just a small investment, uh, Cliff Meister. <laughs> or you could participate in our raffle and have a chance. That's one way. That's mm. a good kick shot. <laughs> That's nice a one. good kick shot. And speaking of kick shots, I know <coughs> Mark has invested a lot of time uh, in kick shots before, and uh, that's something that's really powerful from uh, Alex, Lely, and uh, and Niels, definitely, uh, and Nick, and Nick as well. <coughs> uh, I mean, yeah, of course, hitting the the ball, that's good, but in the high level they are participating in the in the tournaments, that's not enough. No. No, exactly. And uh, in fact, Alex, I, I'm not sure if, the, if they're still available, but I saw um, a couple of short clips of him on YouTube mm -hmm. a long time ago. And just like that, overnight, my rates of kicking out of a safety, I think maybe after watching his I instructions, maybe missed one out of every... 30 attempts. Yeah. Mm. I remember even you because we always played the the, the s doubles, right? And you told me, you said uh, your kicking has significantly improved. Yeah. And that's all because of the knowledge I uh, gained from watching that uh, instructional video by Alex. So big shout out also to Alex for who is uh, probably uh, the benchmark if it comes down to coaching because. Uh, also a great student of the game, well known, of course. <laughs> See, this well is this yeah, is the type of look. Look what he left. Don't think he can reach a potting angle. <coughs> That's uh, yeah, maybe a, a lapse of uh, concentration by uh, Mark, which uh, let uh, Kevin off the hook at first sight, but he leaves he leaves him hooked. What were you saying? Sorry. No. Now it's too late. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The well moment. The moment has passed. <laughs> sorry. The <laughs> uh, w the thing is, though, I'm. I'm. One thing I would say is something because uh, we, as as as, as fans of mm -hmm. the sport, whether it's snooker, pool, billiards, carom, it doesn't really matter. It's all Q sport. Um. We all know anyone who plays this game, the, the mental side is a big part of the game, yep. right? And um, so I like to pick out the minds of the guys who I really look up to. 
uh, if I have the chance, right? And, and, and something that's most of the elite best have in common with each other is even in the worst scenarios, trying to think positive. So if, if you're sat in your seat, and I'll give you an example, Mark missed that opportunity mm -hmm. and, and Kevin came back to the table. Now, there's an argument to say, well, he's lucky he got away with that. But you can also say, listen, if I, well, in, I'll put myself in his perspective, which is hard, of course, but if I was sat down and I had a capable player as Mark at the table, I'd expect him to convert that. So if he misses and I come back to the table, I'll see that as a gift that, hey, at least I'm still in it. I, yeah. I have some, maybe I have a chance to do something. Oh, exactly. And, and so that's the, the, yeah. the positive mindset I'm referring to rather than to think, well, here we go again. He's missed and yeah. I have nothing. I think yeah. that's a negative way of thinking, which is, of course, easily said than done when yeah. you're trailing that far. But I think that's also a key to... And give yourself a chance to fight back, you know? Does he get the right bump there? No, I don't think so, no. Yeah, he's going for a kick, Sean. He's leading 12 wrecks, so I think Mark is not. No, he's now uh, changing his mind, playing the safety. play three rails behind the nine from the side the red's right side of the seven but then it's all cue ball focus and big chance to leave a shot for mark i'm not sure if he's gonna do that I think he's looking at uh, banking the seven towards the eight and the nine, hoping not to leave uh, an open shot for Mark. Good shot. Exactly how I called it, but risky. If you don't uh, hide the cue ball, there's, an, uh, there's a chance for, for Mark, but he played it really good. Now a kick shot for Mark. No. I thought maybe in the rebound. A huge chance for Kevin now to claw in back in his match with one to win uh, another wreck, putting a wreck on the board. And to be honest, he needs to make this one. Oh, comes up a little short on Yate. He should be fine. Yeah. 
1526 still trailing 11 wrecks uh, remember it's a race to 30 mark four wrecks away of his first win in our money battle series and kevin is now halfway reaching the 15 wreck mark Checking the poll at the moment. Uh, let me check. Yeah, no surprise. 74% in favor of Mark. I'm pretty sure some Belgian supporters are still rooting for Kevin. Who fails to make a ball on the break and leaves an open shot for Mark. what he does with a three ball yeah it's playing it uh, top side or center ah center sorry my bad You see a, a different mark at the table and at the beginning of the match. He has uh, played 40 plus wrecks, so there's more feeling in the arm at the moment than at the beginning of the match. Just what he needed. Lots of chances to be at the table. Uh, unforced errors but uh, Kevin didn't punish him enough of course the match is still not over anything can happen it's 27-15 uh, so 12 racks difference of course with the alternate break format it's difficult to string racks you have to break serve of your opponent, so to speak. You can see that Mark is putting in a lot more juice in his break now, and it works. Not sure if it's because of the the big the big lead that he's doing this, but uh, knowing Mark a little, he would like to uh, to punch it uh, in the break like this, and it's not uh, full throttle. Needs a good shot here on the three ball. It's going three rails. Oh, no, didn't work. He didn't uh, find the gap to avoid the six.
It's a thin cut for Kevin. No, he wasn't taken on. He didn't feel like taking that one on. Did he leave? No, I don't think he leaves a pot, but he leaves thin hit on the on the three. And that looks to be good. Stopping by the ten. Not an easy kick shot for uh, Kevin here. So he's taking a little bit more time. He knows that Mark is only three racks away from this win. And he doesn't want to give it away, of course. If you just tuned in the live stream from through the Florian Kohler page, welcome to the money battle match between Mark Bijsterbos from the Netherlands and Kevin Lannoy from Belgium here in Europe. Race to 30, 10 ball, alternate break. And we are in the latter stages of this match as Mark is leading 27 to 15. This is an Orange Forks production stream. Mark going for the 4-5 combination. And he has Maintained position on the four. Mark is feeling that he has the match for grabs. Playing in a pool hole that is obviously closed due to the lockdown here in the Netherlands. But just for this match, we were able to get permission from the local authorities to play this match today without any audience in the, in the pool hall. Uh, Kevin's uh, turn to break. Well controlled break. By Kevin again. This time he has a shot on the first uh, ball on the table, the lowest ball on the table, except for the fact that the two and the three have nestled up together. So there's no open uh, shot on the two and the three after this one. Just popped back in, um, had a little short break. A little lunch. <laughs> a little <laughs> lunch, yeah. <laughs> Now I said before, uh, we just sat down here, you know, we're not actually moving, so it tends to get a bit cold. Sometimes you need to just reposition yourself, but uh, all good. 
So again, if you like the stream, don't forget to share, like and share the stream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Can he make this? No, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. No. And the reason why no. is it's already, yeah. I'd say, aiming a ball to left to the jaw. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe can he can like throw it in with a little uh, with a lots of uh, right hand spin on the in this case, but it's very very tricky. It's very tricky. I think it's too much. But uh, the thing is as well. I mean, I know on a snooker cloth you can really um, almost uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, you can al almost <laughs> create an angle that's not there. Because of the throw of the of the of the cloth, but a pool cloth is obviously different, you know. Yeah. There's not really a throw, is it? Mm -hmm. Or it shouldn't be. There is, but it's not as much as you'd think, uh, mm -hmm. maybe. So what's he looking at? I've not detected any sort of call in terms of maybe. Call it just in case. Yeah, I don't see any way to pot this, and I'm. Phew, it's very hard to get this safe. Yeah, you might just have to push the two on the side and just nudge the four, maybe. Well, aye. Mm. Well. well, at least a bit of separation. Would it? Yeah. What? But still, it's oh again, it's not even firmly on the cushion. If it was tight on the cushion, this would have been a lot harder as well. <laughs> Both players put on their jacket as well, so yeah. maybe indicating uh, they're also affected by the freshness. Well, it's, it's not uh, oh wow. warm outside as well. Oh dear. <laughs> you just missed out on a <laughs> A miss. <laughs> yeah, on, 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 on a st sitter, at least for Mark. Mm. This tells me Kevin wasn't even expecting being back at the mm. table. Look yeah. at the position yeah. he played. That's a poor shot. And uh, really, I'm not trying to pick on uh, Kevin because right from the get-go, it was very evident for me to see that he's much, he's very much so capable, but. Uh, the the very uh, very places cue ball is just signals to me that he wasn't ready to be back at the table, and this is one of those infamous <sighs> cut shots you were referring to that he's yeah. almost potted, well more than ninety percent of them. But in all fairness, if you want to be critical, he, he never should have left himself there. That's oh. that's the main yeah. thing. Yeah, sure, sure, but. I think it's, uh, you know, uh, he feels that it's not going his way anymore. It's getting mm. tough for him to get really gritty. Yeah, I, I think more or less he's given up. I mean, come on. It would mean you have to win 15 racks without have it having Mark win two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. borderline impossible. Maybe Alternate if break. If yeah, maybe yeah. if it was... Uh, uh as you say, win a break and you'd go uh, beast mode, yep. maybe, but yep. that's not yep. the case here. So, so, so it will be interesting. Um, I know a lot of people had a side bet on Mark, so yep. I know a lot of people will <laughs> be happy with the extra. So it's no uh, surprise that uh, the poll has ended in. Uh, 73% in favor of Mark winning this match. Yeah, it's he only needs one rack. One a rack only. That's the um, in um yeah. In the meantime, uh, Kevin has taken a toilet break. That's that's very hard, I think, though, in pool when your um, your opponent is that far 
ahead of you and mm -hmm. also um yeah it's not <laughs> hard to <laughs> put, it right, put it in perspective and yeah. i'm just trying to say is um although if you if, if this would have been a snooker match still it would look equally horrible but i mean at, th at least you take pride knowing that your opponent still needs to put at least i don't know 25 balls mm -hmm. to put that rack or put that frame on yeah. board but in this scenario there's absolutely no hope yeah it's totally different zero I think. hope yeah. Yeah. and uh, i don't know it's it, say if this was a snooker match if you some out of nowhere find some magic mm -hmm. who knows you know i mean that's what ronnie did against mark yeah. selby yeah he looked down and out and then mm -hmm. he produced magic and there you go, he's in the final, and then, of course, he puts that uh, into a win. But in this scenario, of, of course, that's uh, we were talking about maybe, what, three frames, three racks? This is mm. a, a, a whole different ball game. but I don't know. I mean, how could you even sit in your seat and think, well, I'm still in this? Well, not, th not the way Mark is playing at the moment. Yeah. I mean, uh, besides a few... <coughs> <coughs> mistakes um, the last 10 racks he didn't make much uh, unforced errors so you know that there's very very little chance that you get a like uh, you can break serve every time yeah, it's almost no chance I mean you <laughs> or you have to put a spell on him I mean how else you're gonna win this yeah, match or he's gonna play too loose like this <laughs> Yeah, but still, I mean, even when he plays his loose, he will at least find one rack. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did that against Nick. Uh, he was uh, almost absent the majority of the match, and then all of a sudden he puts a rack on the board within one minute, maybe. <laughs> Playing crazy shots, <laughs> even on the 10. You remember yeah, probably yeah. what shot I'm talking about. I, I think he also played the double bank in that match, but then he potted it. Yes, yeah. Nick. Where's the cue ball going? No, we're no. inside at least. <coughs> <coughs> uh, we we could be watching the final sequences of this match actually. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it looks like one this might is the say yeah. big chance for Mark to to clinch this match. Clinching, maybe not the right word, as it uh, would be a very convincing uh, scoreline. <coughs> but it will also probably do Mark uh, a world of good because uh, his previous uh, money games didn't really show anything of his potential. Mm -hmm. but this time he's on the right end of the result. So and there we have it. Big congratulations yep. to Mark. Also, special shout out to Kevin <coughs> who played his part in this match, and not least, all our supporters yeah. online. Thank you all for watching this uh, money battle match. Uh, keep an eye on our uh, Facebook page if you haven't done so. Subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and hit that uh, notification button uh, to be sure you don't miss out any new uh, upcoming live streams from our channel. Um, yeah, we are. We'll be working on a new match for uh, Money Battle. <laughs> I'm not sure when we can do this, as this was under strict uh, uh, measures or uh, restrictions from uh, the government here. So, uh, huge uh, shout out to uh, Vincent Payman for uh, making that happen. Then, uh, last but not least, uh, thank you to uh, the several sponsors. Uh, Q-Score for providing the online platform for this uh, live scoring uh, software in our stream, yeah, which you can uh, operate with a just a cool uh, tablet, either a Android or iOS uh, tablet. It's really cool. Uh, of course, no, not many tournaments at the moment, but keep an eye on the software for future tournaments if you are one of the organizers. Um, shout out to uh, Chris van Mechelen, VM Billiards, for your donation of the raffle, uh, the, sorry, the, the shaft for the raffle, which was won by Mats Voorhoeven. Congratulations again. 
And uh, last not, but not least, um, Mark Bleek, billiard service Mark Bleek is the table, table fitter for this club. And if you need any table maintenance, you can uh, contact him. And uh, I want to thank you too, Arya, <laughs> the floor artist. If you, need, if you need some uh, flooring, contact him. He's one of the best that I know in uh, flooring. Uh, there's probably uh, uh, a good uh, credentials from a couple of pool players here as well. So that was it. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support, guys. It's been a pleasure. And see you the next time. Bye bye.